you're going to be a cameraman, camera person, uh, then do a good job. Take it seriously. It's a real job. And anybody, of course, can just improve their cameraman skills. That's a great idea. We can have cameraman class, and we can have cameraman give people advice. I am a cameraman, informally, who's not too bad at it. I've done a lot of still photography in my life. I've done a lot of video. But I'm more interested not in exposure and what kind of camera to use and all that stuff. I'm interested in composition, uh, creating a good user experience. Um, in my case, I create a very personal user experience in your face. I'm just using a tiny little camera. It's called a, a zoom camera. It's one of their models. And it has a flip screen. And, and it, what I like about it is the audio. It has a really nice mics for the big black fuzzy thing to cover it in case there's wind. I don't know if it really works that well, but I guess I could try it with and without when it's windy. <sighs> but it's not too bad. It's right now my blogging camera. Uh, the things I'm interested in talking about though are composition and style and way of doing things. For example, you should be in shape. A camera person actually has to move around a lot. And I recently realized that to a greater degree because I broke my legs and then I was not mobile and I wasn't doing any camera work. And I started doing it bit by bit and right now I'm walking around. I got a camera, very happy about it. We can look at the pretty trees and comment on plants and it's an excuse to walk around and chat with you. Otherwise I'll just sit in my room on my computer. So just using you here. Oh, there's the ravens. Ravens do weird things this time of the year, and they do weird things other times of the year, too. You hear them squawking, and they also have a pig noise they make. It's really odd. It's all fucked up in here. This is getting cleaned up. Uh, this is all work to, to clean all these plants up in this garden. This is right outside the view. I guess we could call it the view garden, because... Unfortunately, the, the dumbest names stick. That's why there's so many cities named things like Riverside. Ah, what was that coming out here to talk to you about? Oh, camera work. Also, if you have a topic, you should keep, remember what the topic is and be focused. I tend to make very rambly videos that I could, I guess, cut pieces out of it and edit it, but editing takes time and I don't know. Life is just so difficult. Got a nice day out. It's a little sunny but that's okay. Other tips for you, always have your batteries charged, have too many memory cards. Uh, too many is the right number to have. The right amount is the wrong amount to have because the right amount is too many. That's a little messed up, but anyway, have way more than you need. Uh, you never know, someone might want to give you data of some kind. And just keep track of your cards, mark your cards so people don't steal them. Uh, they're like expensive lighters or something if you were a smoker, you know. Uh, people will take your stuff. So that is another question, and that's a big, that could be a whole other video, is how to pass your data into the Bosque Village publication system. How to turn your shit over. You know, how we can do the dailies. Uh, maybe. And di different things for different days. That's the thing, is we're sculpting a place, we're sculpting a time experience and a way of creating something. It's actually a different genre of creation, and it's a different uh, genre conceptually, um, and in the editing. But I think partly we don't have to edit. See, if everyone is using their own cameras and equipment to publish, then there is no central camera team. So for the moment, let's not talk about the central camera team and let's talk about more amateur people who would like to improve their photography in this odd documentary experiential style. So that means you're going to have to be more diligent about making sure your things are plugged in and charged because this place has barely any electricity. I'd like to change that. You know, I'm really proud of myself that I have gotten to a point of needing almost nothing and now I've got dead batteries almost. So I'm just about just sitting here in the dark. But uh, it's good to do that. But that being said, if I'm gonna have you here and you charging your stuff and essentially have four to five small groups of friends or teams assembled here of individuals and they have roles, uh, 
just like on the show the island where you have as many people good as cameras as you can out and, and the island you only have like one camera team and they're usually not seen in the same shot so they're a hidden camera that the participants talk into i don't think we need to just do that we can record any kind of interaction we wish with anyone with some caveats i'll tell you what we publish and what we don't publish so some examples of fun things to publish would be uh people talking about what they know about everything is a ted talk so if somebody has an opinion as we bounce ideas around because i invite really a dynamic interesting thinkers here and fun people in other ways too but um so we can just get used to being on camera together and you can eavesdrop on us it's basically a podcast uh, perhaps a little bit more motion now regarding motion well let me come back to that uh really quick with motion uh i'm holding the camera maybe too low right now my hand's tired i don't have a steady cam i'm and i'm, and I'm walking worse than normal so ah i hope it doesn't bug you that i'm walking but I need an excuse to walk and I tried to get like iPhone I th things and all that and like nothing making me walk I'm not getting better so optimistic thing to do is to chat with you while we walk around kind of one-sided conversation not really you can comment anywhere you want you can write a fucking essay you can make a video I'd prefer you make a video in a response I don't give a shit about anonymous comments on on YouTube because most of them are dumb and the anonymity of it bothers me you know you know who you're talking to when you're talking to me but if i don't know who you are when i'm talking to you then fuck you i'm not going to talk to you those are some rules to use on my internet for me personally is i'm sick of anonymous people don't like them uh, so i, I shut them down pretty quick i'm, I'm kind of short with them i should probably make a little note that when I respond to an anonymous person, if that is affecting my content, which it does heavily, like somebody, somebody anonymous will get a completely different response uh, from me depending on whether they have a profile and whether I know who they are. I guess if, they, if I don't, then they'll get a much shorter one. Um, anyway, other methods of, of recording yourself here, or thoughts about recording yourself, are begin doing it now. Uh, in your life, wherever you're at, with your phone, that's all you fucking need. If, you, if it, your phone's not good enough, get a new phone. Um, I do not currently like vlogging via phones. But that's because I only recently got a smartphone. And it seems clumsy and weird. Although I see some people glue something on the back as a handle. I don't know what's going on. But you, you have to learn about that on your own. And then for handheld cameras and other cameras, I can help out. Uh, Audio is really important. Uh, if your audio sucks, then your video sucks. So, uh, anyway, back to starting right now. Uh, you can start in anything interesting you can think of doing. Because we've got our interesting things here. We've got a big list of fun shit to do. Some of it's even important and might save the world. Other it's just fun. And uh, so, uh, you can start now. I don't know what's interesting in your life. And just record it for yourself. Just start doing vlogging for yourself. Just go ahead and become a vlogger. And that will also help me know who you are. Because if I don't like anonymous people who are commenting on the internet, you can sure as fuck bet, sure as heck bet, that, uh, sorry. I'm just, you know, fucked up. <laughs> uh, I do wonder who gets offended by that kind of thing anyway. And... I sort of have a stereotype to correlate with people I don't want to know for other reasons as well. Because my mouth's just not going to be controlled uh, with people right around me all the time. I got shit to say, and sometimes I got to say fuck. Fuck. Anyway, so you can start, uh, you could start rambling at the camera, which I don't recommend because you might say dumb shit about cursing, and then people will judge you negatively. Uh, you know, anything you say, people are going to say, oh, you're a total dumbass, and you're evil and bad, and, uh, uh, and you're this uh, bad insult, insult, insult. There's a big list of them. And they're all meaningless bullshit. Anyway, but you're going to get that if you do this. Uh, you could instead uh, do become a cameraman of other things. And that's a really great thing to do. So you have to get the consent of the people you're going to record. Now, somebody like a street musician, at this point, I think the general custom in the States is you just shoot the fuck out of them. I see videos of 
people just recording other people all the time in the states so maybe i'm talking to the choir here preaching to the choir and uh other people already know how to make better clips but but i guess up your game whatever your level is at right read about you know top 10 ways to improve your your videos when you're using a, a any kind of camera but and I, if, in this case a phone because i can't advise you that well in fact you could teach me how to use my phone better it'd be great because this thing is kind of bulky and i have my phone with me you, oh shit no i don't i rarely do actually which is really dumb because like right now i could fall over somewhere and that would be if i got injured really bad uh very bad and a phone could make that not as bad Oh, there's so many things we read about filming here now okay so in your life now that means you can ask at a birthday party can i can i film the kid blowing out the candles okay that's pretty officially okay pretty boring though because we've seen those and so what are the oddest things you can record it could be that you start interviewing your friends and asking them random questions i mean that seems like a show everyone can do right actually in little festival things i've had I have the questions game and I've played it around fire pits. I've, I haven't done it for a long time. I haven't had the right number of people. Really, if for it to feel comfy, I think you, I mean, well, you can do it with two people, you can do it with three, whatever. But the ideal campfire number of people for the questions game would be around 10 and maybe two other people who were helping or you know, basically you have a staff behind it as well. Um, in the case of here we would actually film that this is just an idea of, of the kind of things i'm thinking about for here right we've done these before where you where you where you have these things where you 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 have the question bounce from person to person so then rules of the game are god this big distraction god oh fuck At least there's less shit in the road now. There's still holes everywhere and stumps. I gotta make sure I don't fall over on something. This is like totally uneven. Actually, it's the flattest spot I have, but it's still fucked. Um, anyway, so 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 behind the view in this case, because there's internet and there's electricity, and what you do is you could try and film the questions game. And here's how the question games goes. But I'm going to tell you about the set first, because I want you to start thinking about how we could build sets here, how we could do everything about media production. Think like a filmmaker, okay? And you don't have to be a filmmaker. You could be an accountant. You could be a lumberjack. I do not give a shit. But by improving your ability to record and publish things into, it includes imagine things that you would, you would record, um, Make sure it's entertaining and people-oriented, because everything here is people-oriented. Uh, the people are, are the show. I mean, the trees don't jump around a lot. They, they move, they do jump around really slowly, but, you know, it takes decades. So, oh yeah, so, you know, uh, I don't know what's interesting around you. You do. Um, get a goofy thing of an animal that's good to start with but that's boring too uh, if you can get people talking to your philosophy you can play the questions game with them you ask them the question here's how it goes with you too okay I'll, I'll focus on that rather than the setup for the filming it here that's more complex god damn oh my god uh. Well, that's great. Get some footage of me wiping my nose. That's very attractive, I'm sure. I have a fucking tissue. And it's hard to get everything. That's one of the most frustrating things about last year is just the difficulty of tiny things until it makes you not want to do any things because all of them are too hard. Uh, I'm getting over that now. Today is a great day. I work upstairs uh, once or twice and... I'm going to try and live up there. It's a total, just total pigsty. It's astounding what a mess. Uh, no one's lived up there for two years. Uh, there's rat shit, bat shit, bat pee. And then, of course, there's this other animal that lived up there. And he just dumped his crap all over the place. It's it's still fairly organized mess. But uh, I can't have someone else clean it up because they'll mix all my papers together and shit because I got stacks of papers and... You know, also just we always weird to have somebody come into your home and clean it 
but in this case, I mean, it's like really, really disgusting. Um, and it hasn't been cleaned, not just in two years, really. Um, that's when the accident was. But it wasn't clean before that. It was really d dirty then. So uh, it's probably been six or seven years since that space has been cleaned. And that is the place I live in full time. I pee off the porch. I use a pea funnel into a pea garden, actually. You should learn about that. And uh, I've got my little gas stove up there so I can have tea because this is a very cold building, actually. It's a great climate, and I built my buildings wrong, and I could have done so much better, but I know more now. And we have done some. We've done some cob ones. Anyway, uh, you can ask your friend any question. So I'm going to put a link. I, I, I don't know what questions to ask right now. Actually, we could talk about that. What, what questions do you start out with on the questions game? First of all, it's all about attitude. And there's usually a person, and they're usually me, who starts the game. One time I went to a fire, and there was a question game going on, and I was totally surprised. And I sat down, and they asked me uh, if I believed in God or not. I believe it was. And so I gave my answer to that. Now, I thought other people had already given their answers, and there was probably a variety or something. I don't know. Um, that's what I thought. And so then I said, well, so how many more people? And I said, well, you're the first one to go. So I show up to a questions game, and I get ambushed by this immediate big, huge question in a group where most people are highly religious and definitely very theistic. And to say you're an atheist is sort of like saying, I'm going to go get the ax and murder all of you. Some people really somehow think atheists have no ethics, and it's like the most bizarre thing in the world. And I was raised to think that there was something terrible about them, and they were getting hit by lightning by God. I was very young at that point. And uh, all these they had pamphlets on how evil atheists are. And so, um, and atheists are just the worst on many, many scales. People really don't like them. Uh, so I just said to people in my land, around my fire, that I'm probably the most of them, I'm just this really, really bad person. I mean, they may have never hardly met atheists, some people here. So that was interesting. And I actually never followed up on that because it took me uh, years to figure out that that's how I felt about that. You know, that was just a really odd thing. It was funny, though. It just it cracks me up. And the question game then is, then I what I did was I asked another question. The person who answers a question asks a question to somebody else. They pick that person however the fuck they want. But... Uh, you should just bounce it around a lot. I, I always try and pick the person who's speaking the least because that makes total sense because we don't want the same fucking people talking so much or so long. Also, your answer shouldn't be super long and don't do follow-up answers. These are the rules of the question game. Um, the reason to not have follow-up answers, so, so like I'm asked a question, I give my answer, and it's, it should be very, very rare cases in which someone says anything. And it better not be something that is about the issue uh, to cause a discussion. This is the questions game. It's made of questions. It's not the discussion game. You can discuss things later. This is a rapid way to bounce ideas back and forth and find out about people. Uh, don't ask sexual questions unless that's like your group and you know that. But don't be the dumbass who does it when no one else did it. Uh, the host, you can often follow the guy, uh, guy to the host. Uh, because the host knows who's there, and so they're better able to guess what would be appropriate for the group. So let your host set the level of, of alternativeness. Um, some people avoid politics. Some people don't. Uh, I think I would rather avoid it. I would rather avoid religion, uh, unless it's sort of about religion itself. But, like, I don't want to hear discourses on anybody's religion, and I don't have time to listen to them all, and I'm not going to have as many people around me if they all want to give me their religious stuff at me. I can go read their books. Give me a book. I, t I have religious books. I've collected them all my life. I've actually read all but the ones that I didn't want to read, so 90% of them, you know, and some of them are odd books about all kinds of spiritual shit. So I'll listen to that. That's great. And that's another activity thought is... is don't do activities that you don't want to publish. Now, here's some of the ones you... Okay, so back in your own life, just I hope you're thinking. I hope you're making your list right now. Uh, anything you can think of. Who's the weirdest person you know? And what questions can you ask them? Okay? Now, uh, anyway, I'll put... A, uh, we'll figure out the questions later. Uh, but, but they're supposed to be lighthearted. Okay? Generally. Uh, open. And, of course, questions that aren't just yes or no are better. 
And that's also on the responsibility of the person being asked, because we shouldn't have to formulate every question as, uh, as uh, you know, forcing it to be open-ended, okay? A person who says yes or no can then explain why yes or no. Yes or no, in fact, is not a good answer, okay? So don't respond to a yes or no question with a yes or no. Sure, you can start out with yes or no, but then you got to fill in something interesting about your thoughts. You know, why do you think that? And, and you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to even agree with yourself. You know, you can explore the damn idea in a friendly, happy way and then bounce it back. Uh, we'll probably learn as we go along, and I think each group has their own culture of this, of what's appropriate questions, what's interesting questions or not. Like, if I went to a fire with a bunch of Mexicans and, and, and foreigners, I would actually not want to have the fire be all about differences between Mexico and the U.S. Well, actually, that's not a bad one, if I had the right balance and the right people. Um, and people don't know the topic, but I, I often inject the topic via my questions, and I have the kind of people who pick up on that. And we can follow trains of thought as this really rapidly going back and forth question and answer game. Um, don't ask people things that are too personal that they wouldn't want to say. This is not truth or dare. And nobody has to answer you. I guess if you're, if you're asked something and you really don't want to fucking answer it, I don't think you're under any obligation to do so. And to force you to would ruin the game for you a little bit and maybe other people. So I think that it's better sometimes, and it should be rare, when you just say pass. And then you pick a person who you ask a question to. Could you even pass on asking the question? Well, good Lord, if you're not going to ask questions and answer them, you're not in the game. So it should be super, super rare for you to not answer the full question with yes, because, yes, maybe, yes, but, and I know I, you know, whatever. Explore the damn idea. That's what you're there for. Otherwise, get out of the game. Have a set of questions uh, ready, you know, whatever. I mean, have them in your head. Uh, prep them. So do it like fortune cookies, you know how you write fortune cookies? I did that. I had custom ones made. It was a blast. They made them for me in an in international district in Seattle. All I had to do was give them the fortunes, which I made with a spreadsheet. It was great. It was hilarious. Great party icebreaker. Um, but have your questions set up. I mean, you could even have a list of them, a physical goddamn list, if that's what it takes for you to be a good player. Now, I don't, I don't personally do that. I completely wing it. And I'm largely winging it based on the group. And I, it's really better if the group wings it on their own too. But if you don't have a... So, so go with the flow and, and ask the question that's really appropriate to the setting and play off the other questions. That's cool. But have a list because sometimes there's no good question or the group is a little shy or whatever. And you have those questions there as fuel. Don't even tell people you got them. You know, grab, grab a cup of coffee or whatever it is you do where you're at and come back after you looked at your list and have three good ones in your head to get that conversation moving. Because I don't want to fucking be bored if I'm sitting there and I certainly want to be, wouldn't want to be bored recording it because we're going to record this stuff. So you're going to record that stuff in your own way. Uh, and, and so you're playing a two-person question game when you, when you throw these questions at your friends. Now, I, was, I suggest you be in camera if at all possible. I suppose that's difficult because of the pandemic stuff or something at the moment. This is 2021. 20, but you can figure something out. Um, no edit is better. And that's why I say get two people in the camera. Editing is hard. Fuck editing. Have I edited any of this? Might have. I mean, I think I left me, you know, like picking my nose over there. But fuck it. You get the straight me. I guess if I say something obnoxious enough to enough, to enough people, then... Uh, maybe I should, that should be edited out. But I don't always watch these. I just post them. So, we'll see. Ah. Uh, Damn. Try and take a shower today. So we got the questions game one. The other question is, uh, we don't want to do all talking heads. This is a talking head thing, okay? That's terrible. 
You hear that chainsaw in the background? Very annoying. We need to have chainsaw day here, maybe two days of the week where chainsaws are allowed. And it's actually a day of more rest because you're not doing as much filming. Well, you should always build a film here. Uh, that's my friend. I don't know who that guy is. Hi, Boogie Baby. Boogie's one of the best dogs. Ah. Uh. So visually speaking, as you, as you look around you and you think about movement, pattern, color, what is visually interesting on an artistic aspect? What is the grayest? What's the dirtiest? What's the tallest? Don't go on the tallest thing. Don't get hurt doing this shit. Um, <laughs> wonder why I would say such a thing. Uh, Anyway, you know what you should do. Get, get creative and do it randomly. You don't have to be inspired to be a creative person. Just process every single possibility and then pick the ones you like. You can't do that with everything. But tree just fell. I'm building a garden in the best spot. I believe it will be the most productive spot in the entire bosque. It will have uh, fruit trees and shit like that. I have planted very few of the things most people would have. And that's because I'm learning more about how the forest works. So you can have rambling things like that about philosophy that might actually be important. I think land use is extremely important and that we're ripping the shit out of the planet and we're all going to die. And I'm trying to create an alternative to that. Part of that is landscape design, uh, not using outside resources, because consumption is the problem. Consumption is the problem. Did you ever notice that consumption was the fucking problem? God, I hate all these ecological people, many of whom are arguing with each other in weird ways. Half of them are probably trolls for some company or government. And uh, so, so that conversation is useless. I don't want to think about all that shit. <clears throat> So you can do, you know, heartfelt philosophical thoughts like that. That's great. Uh, you do have to get consent from people. Um, don't be a rude asshole at all. They don't owe you their image. Now, you could be a person in public who records people against their will. I think there are very few justifications for that. Perhaps uh, I like the idea of cop watch stuff a bit. I think that, uh, and you know, they got their body cams too now. That's great. Everybody's got cameras. I think that's fucked up. Fucking like way better. You want to see what the most violent part of your government does. And they're also, you know, I also solve a lot of problems. I've had, of all the cops I've known in my life, only a small percentage have robbed me. Although I did get robbed too many times, in my opinion. But we'll I don't want to talk about that. So we got to censor things, too. That's another thing, as I'm saying, is don't publish stuff that you don't want people to see. Now, I know that sounds funny to say, but really think about the fact that you can't delete it. Even if you delete it, someone else already screen recorded it. And so once you publish it, it's out there. Don't think you can kind of publish something. Now, in most cases, you'll be ignored. That's just fine. No problem at all, but it's fun to document your life. You could set everything to private and then, and then set it to public later. Uh, so you could just think on it. There's no rush. You don't have to be controversial, in my opinion. I, I, any, any controversialness that's in me just comes from what I believe and that other people don't agree. So, well, bummer for you. Uh, I think I'm right, obviously. I think I am not ignorant. Uh, I, in fact, far less so than a lot of people, most everybody. Um, there's specialists, of course, on topics where they can kick my ass, but... I got pretty strong philosophy. I'm not just fucking around with my thought process. And I think most people are. So, uh, what the point of that was. Oh, yeah. Anyway, but don't worry about it. Uh, just talk. I, I talk to the camera about like I talk to a person. Right now, how I'm talking in this camera is, a, is almost identical to how I would talk with a person who is here. Now, of course, how I deal with individuals here does vary, you know. But I try and pretty much act the same towards everybody. And then occasionally, people are really interesting. Many of them want a reaction. So, this was a failed fungus experiment. No, no, that isn't. Oh, cool. The guys put uh, 
firewood, I told him to do this, around this nut tree. This nut tree is just having a hard time. I did just buy fertilizer for the first time. I never do that. Um, it's a bad idea. It's against the rules, but I did this year. Four pickup truck loads full of unknown shit that it looks very manure-like. It works like it. So uh, anyway, some of our special trees will get more help. This whole area here doesn't get any special help. Another thing I need to do is a tour of every single garden and area as it's delineated and then have a graphic show up of where on the bosque that is so it can get marked later, perhaps marking as soon as possible. Perhaps I should put signs up again because um, most places don't have names. But I'm defining them well enough now that names can actually make sense. Uh, Well, in your own life, you can explain to me what, what, why you live the way you do. That'd be great. Uh, so you can, you can record things that are not you on camera. I'd rather see you on there and then interesting people. But I'm not interested in slow documentaries watching the boringness of places. You know, I mean, I have ones that you can see the sunrise and animate it. That's cool. Do that. You could do it here. We have great sunrises here for most of the year. Not this time of year. And uh, those would be great to see every day. Time lapsed up. Why not? I can have a make make a channel for it, you know. So we could do some slow things, but generally things are slow enough as it is. And so, if anything, we want to jazz it up, increase the energy level. Um, I even want people when they come here to be fairly open and and extra assertive with their speaking. But don't come here if you're not willing to do that on video, unless you're like a cameraman or here for some other role. I mean, put yourself out there. Don't be boring. Now, if you don't have the uh, interest in doing that, then make sure you're in a role where you don't have to or don't come here. Uh, I get mail all the time of people who say, I would not go there. And it's like, I don't give a shit. I probably don't want you here, obviously, because you don't want to go here, you know? <laughs> so that's kind of a waste of time to talk about. Uh, enjoy the videos or block them. I don't give a shit. Uh, my preference would be whoever, anybody, and I'm encouraging this even for people who aren't going to come here, try recording your life and publishing it, what you're comfortable with, how you're comfortable. Figure it out. Be publishing tomorrow. It's so easy to set up an account on YouTube. Uh, you will probably not make any money. You don't expect that. But you can record your life, share your thoughts, and we can have a smarter world. Please do try and contribute something of use. And then for people here, I have more training on site. Uh, if you're a better photographer than I am, you should train me. If I know something you don't, you should train me. And that's all the way from selecting the idea, which usually are spontaneous. I prefer spontaneous ideas. Because, like I said, I want it to be like you're just here in the Bosque. Virtual Bosque is kind of really well rendered. Uh, reasonable definition, decent audio. And shows you a stream of other ideas. In my case, uh, not all perfectly organized in, in order, but there's a philosophy behind this. I mean, I hope even when you're watching this video, you're judging whether you're going to turn it off or not or why, whether you're learning something. And when I talk about attitude and, and camera work, that matters a lot. Um, I don't like cameras on cameras very much. Avoid recording other people recording. The problem is that and we'll have different rules for different settings. In some cases, phones won't be allowed. In, in some areas of the property, no cameras are allowed. You're not allowed to take a picture of someone there uh, at all unless you walk up to them and you specifically say to them, can I take your picture in a very polite way? They, in a very polite, bosque way, say, uh, no, I don't prefer that right now or something, you know. And the other person says, okay, thank you. Perhaps I'll see you later. And... Uh, and, you know, maybe you could say, if you're actually interested in the person in an attractiveness way, you could tell them your name or whatever. But the thing is, everybody here knows who everybody is. And so uh, the people on site have access to the profiles of the other people. There are shows, like reality shows, where they try and keep people's details secret from each other. And I also don't want to watch the show of just all of them saying all the things that they are either for too long. Now, in this case, they can do that on their channel. They are doing that already. Um, and we could do interviews with people, it's no problem. But in general, uh, that is not how I want it to work. 
You figure it out. It doesn't matter. These are suggestions. Um, the rules. Don't publish any drug use. Now, drugs are illegal here. Uh, Mexico may legalize something sometime. But uh, at this moment of this recording, things are not legal. And so they are not allowed here. Uh, and therefore, I don't want to catch you. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? I think I'm saying... I don't want to catch you doing drugs here because then it becomes partly my responsibility and I'm supposed to do shit about it. Also, uh, there's lots of places to do drugs. There's lots of festivals where drugs are tons of them. I, I love Burning Man. It's great. Uh, you know, different, for different, different people. But uh, in this climate where I'm at, in this political climate, uh, I can't have open drug use here. And I would say any drugs that interfere with the security or health of the place. And who decides that? Unfortunately, it's not you. So, no heroin. Uh, but, you know, I, and I do have a no smoking rule that's important. Um, so, legal drugs are legal, I guess. Uh, cigarettes are not legal. Because uh, they're, they're smoking, uh, so is smoking anything else. Because it has uh, pipes and shit and it smells bad and there's fire hazard and it's bad for your lungs, okay? I'm just anti-smoking, that's why. It's a very arbitrary rule. If you don't like that rule, please do not come here. <sighs> anyway, that wasn't the kind of rules I was talking about. Oh, uh, oh but yeah, yeah, don't uh, film. If, if you did do that here, like uh, you ate something, don't even talk about that. Okay, we just if you're in a good mood, be in a good mood. But uh, you don't need to fucking announce what chemical trip you're on. And certainly don't tell me. And my recommendation is don't tell anyone. You should be experienced. Don't fuck around. Uh, and nobody will find out, right? Great. Uh, don't film intense politics. And really any. I mean, fuck it. If, if every other thing you post on social media is against a particular politician and you're going to be like that here, please don't come. It is boring. We have no control over those things. Uh, it's as bad as talking about sports all the time. Now, is it important? Uh, of course. Extremely important. And often, it is such a point of contention that it's not useful. Now, we can dabble in it. Uh, and mostly I'm talking about on-camera things, what we, what we record and publish. But I'm really talking about just in general. Be here now. Don't be a religion here. Don't be a whatever you most identify as here. Don't have that be the subject of conversation. If you're from New York, you're from New York. We're not going to fucking talk about New York all the time. In fact, very little. We want to be here now doing new things, and focus on activity and creation. Activity and creation. And that's up to you on every level. I can't do it all. And the way I want to do this place, I mean, I just talked to a lady, I uh, chatted with her, and uh, she used to do casting and stuff. And uh, actually, I've talked to other reality TV people as well. But her, 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 her she said to me when I said I want to publish a bunch of junk out of the Bosque, she said to me... Uh, Uh, watch out for the production company. And I agree immediately and I understood everything she she meant. Um, now, that's why I like the idea of people publishing to their own streams. They own it. Uh, and I'm less responsible for it in some sense. But uh, I would only want people to post pretty positive things, basically. You know? If somebody's negative, I'm not into it. I know negative shit occurs, and we deal with it. And uh, I'm pretty experienced at that at this point. So, I don't know. People got to control themselves. Uh, now, we can have Bosque cameras too, but I think what topic we're on is uh, you here now. Uh, you start back there, and, you, and then you're here. How can you start recording well? Well, first of all, Everybody around you has already agreed to some level of being recorded. You will need to learn the culture and system around that. Those people are identified differently. They have a different color shirt on or something or a scarf if they don't want to be part of it. 
there are people here who can't who cannot record and if you record them you'll be kicked out because they're not here to be recorded uh, and then there's uh, other things we don't publish arguments if a couple has a big argument or something uh, or if you feel confrontational towards anyone I would recommend not starting by uh, uh, if you, I mean, it's just going to fuck the thing up if you record it. I'm not, or maybe everything should be recorded if it's a conflict. I don't know. You people figure out what you're going to do. But the cool thing about it then is there's no central recording agency. There's no production company to fuck with shit. Uh, they don't get any of the money. Whatever your channels are, you either get fame or money uh, or whatever works for you. Uh, if a social media influencer comes here, I want to know who their sponsors are. Uh, and I probably want to, them to pay me for using this as a set. Essentially become a sponsor of the Bosque. Somebody has to sign up for something and somehow things have to get paid for. So, uh, random clips are fine, I guess. Complex shows have been tried, theater shows, and I think those are great. I still have footage from one that, uh, well, there was one that wasn't filmed well. I handed it to a guy who did not film it well. Great guy, I love him. But uh, no, he totally failed because it got dark, which was really the director's fault. Well, he got, it got dark and he got behind. But the director's fault was he started the show too late. That's why punctuality is such a huge deal here. Light matters, okay? If we're here to record for other people who then support the project, right? If it is in that sense a show or a, an exhibition hall of, of thought and technology, whatever um, then uh, that's a whole different way to think about it and it's better I like that way better so this battery is dying that means I'll have to walk back to that building uh, take my other battery hope it's charged which it better be because I can try to be good about that put this battery in the charger on the desk very obvious and then at the end of the day make sure that I have both my batteries charged so that right in the morning I've got charged batteries charge your shit up any kind of those things even those things they call solar generators now that's a great thing to bring down if you're doing any media um, it's a solar panel you can put it somewhere and it charges up a battery the name is stupid to me it, it sounds really dumb because generators are gasoline generators generally and the box is really just a battery uh so i don't know i think they're cute systems i'd love to see one i've never seen one uh, any kind of technology like that that you want to bring down basically camping solar is probably a good thing to do uh, you could donate it later if you want uh, you could even come as a representative of your company i've thought about that like maybe i should contact a bunch of companies like gosun for example gosun has uh, what i believe to be even though i've never used it uh, the best solar oven on the market today and it can be improved but uh, it's a really good thing it is a evacuated tube just like a solar hot water heater and so it's way more efficient uh, it is an odd shape the one I saw is like a tube but hey you know I'm an adjustable guy I adjust to what's easiest and best so I want to see one uh, my friend just ordered two of them I'm jealous and uh, I think I should have every kind of anything that's resembling goods in solar wise here. Uh, the worst of it, I don't know. I don't want to insult companies. And most of the shit is really good anyway. Like most ecological pro pro products are pretty good. Although there, no, there's a lot of greenwashing shit. Yeah, I need to make a list. And actually, this is useful for you. If you're coming down here as a documentarian, and I'll fill you in here you are okay in some way document something Christ like, write a book I don't know uh, but it's produce or die here so uh, I have my camera I'm moderately good at directing things sometimes other people have uh, done r recording and then they pass the data to me that works I would actually like to set up a system where we pass data of all photographers to all photographers so that they can publish the event as they wish um, and name name the folders by the by the photographer's name or something although it's tough when a camera changes hands we could name cameras 
interesting notion. <sighs> In other words, figure your equipment out and figure it out a little bit better. I mean, you know, don't go out and spend wads of money on fancy shit. Uh, look at, and, and I should pr probably put a link in this to equipment that I think or how I evaluate equipment. Uh, right now your phone is what you'll start playing with for sure. Off you go, you're started. Um, uh, other crazy ideas for here. There's the usual, mixing adobe, mud wrestling. We only did that two or three times. Uh, uh, working, but... You know, I don't really use the cast members for heavy work, to be honest. I, uh, some of them that like to do it, can do it. There's been like two guys here, out of very many people, who actually seemed really gung-ho. That's not true. There was probably seven or eight. Sometimes I don't always know, but there was two that really stood out. That's not many. So I would rather um, subsidize people to come here. And that's why, you, that's why you need to gather more money for this system. In other words, you know, I'm not just doing this for nothing. But if it's useful as a set, then people who are making money off of it would give me some. And, of course, my own channel, if I'm publishing interesting shit, might make its own money, which would be even better. It doesn't really matter who performs for who, who records it or how. Let's just think about it. Be really smart. Don't pass back and forth viruses. So one thing we could do, for example, is collect uh, some uh, cards yeah huh how do we do that collect photos on an apple and deliver them out of the CF port of uh, windows will viruses transfer uh, the problem is somebody could actually hand in a virus accidentally or intentionally how do we share photos we just publish them all to the cloud and then we just share them by having access to them that way that's not actually a bad idea. In other words, teach people how to publish them very well. Uh, and then they'll kind of self-index, perhaps. We could have pages that aggregate photos that someone took here at a certain time. I could do that now. And then you think of that. It's so interesting to watch this place change visually. Uh, so anyway, when you're here, you take whatever it is that is exciting in your life, anything about you, the reason you got uh, accepted here, uh, and you do that. And then you do some other stuff. And because hopefully the things you do will teach someone else in some way. Uh, don't do anything that hurts other people. Uh, don't bring uh, dangerous tools or, you know, even like, I don't even like this place as a place for fire spinning that much. Now that's, I've also seen it like way too much fire spinning in my life. I think it's great. I love it, but I get bored. I've already seen it. So, uh, Look at the list of things to bring and not to bring. But camera equipment is a big one. Um, if you have other things, though, the, the point is if you have other things about you, then it may be that you want to bring the tools to do those. Let's say you're a wood carver. Uh, I don't have very many wood carving sets here, you know, so you could bring that. Uh, and you can donate or not. Totally cool either way. It really depends on how, what kind of person you are. And, you know, some people have brought old shit here to donate. And I... I'm fine with that. We can use warm clothing. I know people who uh, don't have enough. Uh, day packs are strong. Those seem to be hard to buy here. Uh, old jacket that's too ugly and you don't want to wear it. Like, uh, oh, I already mentioned warm clothes. Yeah. And uh, weird shit too. You know, I like weird clothes personally. But I just give them to my friends uh, who don't have as much as me. And uh, occasionally I keep things for loners for people here. But people who come here, gotta understand, come self-contained. Bring all the shit you need. Do not have to go ask people for things. Will people be nice to you? Damn, I hope so. I will, I'll try to be nice to you when you ask me for things. But uh, if you ask me for things and you should have thought ahead on that, then you already annoyed me. And that's fine. You know, I don't judge people for everything all, all at once. 
but that's something I would judge as bad. So, uh, being unprepared, coming unprepared. And that's one of the reasons that I think you need to read all the rules. They're there for a reason. Like the rules I'm telling you right now, let's get back to it, why you don't publish certain things. So politics and religion we'll find out about, and that will evolve as we go. We could have particular times where we talk about it, I suppose, uh, and see if it's useful, and see if we've collected quality enough people that it's an intelligent, engaging, polite debate by informed people. If it can't be that, and it's people yelling at each other, people just calling each other names, essentially, uh, the popular ones of the moment, no, then that's not interesting. And it's a waste of our time. I'm okay with someone doing a full TED Talk type thing. We could have a, a thing in the terrassa where people sit around and uh, there's a time scheduled, a time slot. It's, o it's open mic, essentially. That's exactly what it is. And you're welcome to do your TED Talk or your song or anything else. Tell a fucking joke. It'd be great. Uh, I think that's very worth it, especially here because... If we want to break away from our massive attachment to entertainment, you know, that, that we have this constantly. I've experienced that since the accident. Before that, I watched some movies, but I've watched so much TV in this time. And we want to avoid doing things here that we could do elsewhere. We want to avoid things that aren't this, you know? Um... That means tell your family you can't have family chats. Don't talk. Well, who knows? See, I'm just making these rules up. And that's your footage. Uh, try to only publish public things. I mean, it's a fucking show, and someone's going to copy it to a public place anyway. I have published private things, uh, and I have reasons. You can figure out your own reasons. But do it the right way, and protect people, you know? Uh, this is also a place where people probably shouldn't do anything that's too embarrassing. Um, I hate to say that, I really do, because the funnest times are when people do something embarrassing, right? That's where all the fun is at. Not really. I hate fucking prank videos. I think about doing pranks here, and I'm like, well, you know, maybe a really good one every now and again. Hopefully on as many people at once as possible. Depends on how many people there are. Your woodpecker. Uh. Got to figure out what to do with this grove over here. Uh, unfortunately, if you have a forest, there's a whole bunch of forestry decisions you have to make. That's why there's forestry, I guess. And I'm kind of an amateur. But I have a couple really good books about it that, that fit my values really well. Their reasoning seems solid to me. And because uh, I care about every piece of the land. I care about every piece of it. You know, it does bug me a little bit that the roads squish the land. But that's what humans do. They need roads. If they're well placed, then they're not bad things. In fact, sometimes they guide water to places where we don't want it otherwise. Uh, my roads become in the rainy season too slippery to go on sometimes. That is quite annoying. So I actually need to pavement a couple of spots not many but eventually it'll probably mostly will get paved if, if anyone ever lives here i don't know what'll happen but yeah i think about these very long-term plans i don't care if they happen or not but uh, i want to set up a, a way of it being here a, a layout that, that uh, protects the land inherently and that mainly is to protect them against humans and so humans have to have their very well-defined spots and i have architecture and buildings i want to do this with the kind of controversial thing is that there's Three kinds of buildings I want to build. Cobb huts like we have already. You can see those online. They can be comfortable. We're not good at them yet, but every time we get better, we've only done two. Well, no, we did the chicken house too. Well, the rabbit house, we have four, okay. Uh, we need to do them better and uh, have better designs. So those huts are fine. They're basically to replace tenting almost. They're a nice clean cave um, that's comfortable enough. And then I want to have huts, and those are different. I want to have uh, uh, huts that have more facilities. Now, I see, I can't really do the small tent ones, can I? 
I think huts are the way to go. If we can cheaply learn how to make multi-level huts with uh, four to something rooms, a shared kitchen area, uh, a composting toilet, a good one, like people, you know, you don't want them to ever have a problem with a composting toilet. They need to be the best composting toilets there can be. Not all the most expensive. An airport one might be more, but it wouldn't be amazing to have composting toilets in an airport. I don't know why people are so fucking dumb. Why is every person I hear about, you know, thinks about ecological shit? You know, I, I, I know the answer if I ask them, do you, you do shit in clean water? And I know the answer is going to be yes. And then, I don't know, that just kind of taints my, my belief in them a little bit, you know? Among other things, uh, I think in any group of ideas or movements, some of the most obnoxious people come to the top. And I don't think that is dependent at all on what organization it is. I think it's inherent to organizations. We are organisms, sometimes we are collective organisms, you know, kinds of bouncing off each other ways that cause ripples of strangeness, strangeness everywhere. Uh, it would be nice to have Kleenex. I could like make my place comfortable. Yeah, I live in a total pigsty, it's totally disgusting. Uh, this is, I don't know, I wouldn't want someone to document it. I, I might document it, fuck it. Like stacks of everything. Can't even use that table. This is my art setup, but I don't like it. It's not comfortable, it's not what I want, and I can't paint in a place where I'm not comfortable. It does not work for me. So I'm going to try and move upstairs. That's my, my new goal. But I'm going to have to pay some people to clean it up for me because it's got too much time without humans and too much time with mice and bats and things. So, and then there's my bed. Um, it's a big mess. It'd be nice to get out of the hospital bed, I guess. Although it's pretty comfy. Uh, I don't, I, there's no electricity with it, so that's annoying, but whatever. Uh... And I sit on that computer all day. All day, almost every day. And whatever it is I'm doing, I like to pretend that it's useful and good. But I'm not so sure it always is. I guess it, you know, who knows. Ugh. Ugh. So other ideas for you is you could record your to-do list. You should censor it first. Censor everything. Oh, and that was another thing I was going to say is as you're recording, you don't record as things people don't want recorded. So uh, don't surreptitiously record anyone ever. This is a recording having heavy place, I guess. But uh, that is inappropriate behavior and should not ever occur. So no hidden cameras is my point. We're not trying to trick people. Uh, even though I've occasionally said, you know, I want it to be like a reality television show because I'm trying to communicate what I mean, what I'm trying to create. But it's a really terrible thing to say. And I, I'll tell you why my vision of the Bosque is not a reality television show. One is who has control of the cameras. Uh, it's totally distributed and delivered independently. So each one is responsible for their own content. The Bosque Village is not responsible for that content in any way. Anyone who uses it, uh, yeah, is responsible for too. But the owner is the person who, who had the camera. And that's another interesting thing about what arguments we could ha have regarding this is who owns the footage? Well, I don't know. What I do know is I want rights to use it all. <sighs> because I can set up a semi-useful organized team that can easily publish your content into a coherent body of content so that somebody can watch the boss get kind of like a show, except that they can pick what character they want to follow. Uh, they can interact and suggest things. They can buy gifts for the people on it. If some people come in and have their own one set up, that's fine. Um, 
So who owns it? I want rights to use it. And that should be in writing always. Anybody who comes here, no matter who they are, it doesn't even matter if they have a camera or not. They should just have to uh, sign the thing that says Bosque Village can publish this footage as Bosque Village um, with no responsibility to do so. Uh, which, we, which means we can kind of co-opt your sponsors a little bit if you have sponsors, but you'd have to have a relevant sponsor and we don't buy most things. Most products we don't like, so it's really hard to have a sponsor. Oh, I haven't asked anybody. Anyway, we'll work all that out. So uh, the person in it, okay, the person being recorded does not own it. Do they own it if they hand the camera to the friend and it's their camera? No, he's the camera owner. I think it's the camera owner, but what if the camera gets passed around? Maybe all of the footage has to be released as Creative Commons. That is a possibility. Uh, the author still gets credited, and so they still drive traffic back to their normal way of publishing. They still benefit uh, as a person who is more known, and people who are more known often get more opportunities. Uh, although, if you're going to be known, it's nice to be known as a nice person. Um, and, and that gets back in, you know, who I want to invite here and who not. But everybody's got to be a nice person. As a camera person, whether you're informal or formal, don't get arrogant. Don't stick cameras in people's faces and be obnoxious. Jeez, be polite. But everybody's already agreed to be on camera unless it's indicated by their clothing that they're not. And I don't know what the symbol is that I'm going to use right now for uh, don't put me on camera at all. I believe it's actually a green scarf. This green scarf is a very flexible thing to have, and it fits right in with the forest. So mm -hmm. I think it's great. It means don't talk to me. Don't record me. I do not exist in your framework. Don't yell hi to me. Don't nod hi at me. I don't exist. If I wear the scarf, I'm like a tree. Don't take a picture of me. I'm not there for you. Do you understand that? So I'm just trying to help out the people who want to be on these quiet, silent retreats. And or they are in a role where they don't, they're not the one they want to be recorded. For example, maybe we would have official cameramen sometimes that we should have this. People that we know are good cameramen. Everybody else puts their damn cameras away. So for every single event, I think we should just have a camera policy. And you should be able to read that policy. And it's either no cameras. Like I said, there's whole areas of the Bosque where there's no cameras. Um... And then there's cameras where they're approved anytime, you know, like sculpture or something like that. And we'll put symbols up for these, right? Uh, we'll try and keep zones apart from each other a little bit so that it's not confusing. Like, you know where you shoot and you know where you don't. And then, uh, you know, you know the, kind of the rules of how things work. So that's not all set up yet. Um, but I know some great places to take pictures, and that's all you need to start out with. Um, they're changing all the time. I've got a whole cool forest garden that's going to be sculpted. It's I mean, long, huge amount of work. And then I've got a, a long valley-like thing now called Alicante. It's a garden. I'm not sure if I like the name. And um, we are sculpting that. Nobody started digging yet. Oh, we, no, we did a number of years ago. I did a test run and to just find out, wow, that's a bunch of work. Um, it's dudes that are strong with shovels. Uh, they are local guys that come help me out. Uh, we will have rules for you on whether to photograph them or not. Um, it really depends. There's people that we know from nearby that are workers here, and they should be invisible uh, or not. Uh, and it depends. We're going to try and arrange the schedules better. As you can see, I'm waffling because I don't know. But there have to be days of the week where workers can come here and do a bunch of stuff. And uh, nobody records them at all. And we'll have certain specified workers if we, and somebody will be in charge of helping you know who to photograph and who's not. If they're doing something interesting, like, I don't know, maybe they're doing some cool rock work or something. Uh, or they're, uh, maybe they're plant propagating and it looks cool. I don't know what. But uh, basically know who to record and who not to record. And the reason I'm waffling is because I'm not sure. Um... I mentioned don't don't publish disagreements. Uh, we could have a, I don't know. That's a really tricky one too. I, I I think we can't because we don't know what we're doing yet. 
Um, we can record them but not publish them. That's very dangerous since if you record something, it will be published. That is how things work, usually. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to try and record more of my ideas on how this whole community works. But this one role you were talking about, the documentarian, once again is everybody. So help other people out. Help uh, be, be good subjects for them. And that will teach them to be good subjects for you. Um, if someone says something interesting, there's a whole bunch of language around this, and I'll make a different video about that. The language of film documenting in Bosque Village. But you set up your quick consent thing, or they've already consented based on what they're doing, and uh, then you get the best angle, you care about not jiggling the camera around, you think about every detail of how to make a good video. You critique your own videos, you watch videos on how to make videos, uh, you listen to my fucking advice because I have really good advice. Yeah, but a lot of people do. So look for good camera people and say, well, what, what tips do you have? What do I not know? Uh, better yet, read a bunch so you at least have a list of what it is you, you know you want to learn. And you don't have to start with the steady cam thing. I wouldn't suggest that. Um, I see people with fancier cameras on reality shows than I have. And I wonder to myself about that. I'm going to run out of battery here pretty soon. So this conversation has limited... Uh, utility, I think. I might as well say goodbye. Um, anyway, learn from each other. Uh, criticize yourself. Um, I don't know whether stills or video are better to do. Let's talk till the battery runs out. Um, I like video a lot. And that is what is mostly on channels that people watch. And so I don't I'm not that thrilled when still photographers come here. I don't think this is the, I mean, you do it, but you make sure you're paying me for the privilege of not doing anything that helps me really, because I don't need pictures of the plants here very much. I mean, if you've got a GPS thing that will make a virtual model of the Bosque, that'd be great. But if you're just gonna dink around and take pictures of flowers, that doesn't help me at all, just so you know. Do it, uh, that's fine. And actually, I do wanna make a, a calendar that shows which flowers are in season when. That'd be really fun kind of a, a model calendar for, for flowers or something. Um, not that many flowers out right now. I did see an amaryllis came up. So dry, it's just gonna get drier. Uh, other documentary advice, this is really disjointed, isn't it? I don't care. Oh, don't act, don't act. I've tried to write scripts for myself to like talk about something and if it works for you do it but um i just try and know what i kind of feel i want to say what i want to communicate what kind of vibe i want to have and hopefully i'm well versed enough on the topic in this case we're just talking about documentarians in bosque village and maybe why i'd have them or not or how i'd have them or who i'd have how what the expectation is because i'm not just going to invite arrogant fucks who want to do what they want to do i'm going to avoid production companies um, I will not have people here who embarrass anyone here. Uh, that's why we publish ourselves. Um, and maybe I even put a moratorium on, uh, except for your entry, like, like a after you enter the property, your, your first contact, which is recorded and published, then you go immediately into orientation or your schedule for orientation as soon as possible. If it's late, put you to bed, shouldn't have arrived late anyway. Uh, and then you wake up, and then you do orientation. But you're not you're not publishing then. You don't publish your orientation. Um, we have uh, ways of doing things here. It's a private place. We have uh, proprietary methods. We uh, we have privacy. We, it's very frightening in some sense to publish so much of one's life um, in this space. But so it's a brave thing. I guess that's another thing we'll bring up: is don't just be a cameraman. Don't do it. Get on camera. I think it was the show The Island that I was trying to think of earlier. They have official cameramen, but they pass it off clearly because sometimes the cameramen are on the camera. And I want to make sure that nobody's even mostly just on the camera. I want most people to be, uh, I, mean, I mean, on the camera, personing the camera, camera personing the camera. Um, <laughs> record, recording. Um, but to make sure that you're not just a person who's recording, you're, that's kind of voyeuristic almost. It's almost rude, actually. I think you should have been publishing before you came and that I'll accept camera people 
who have already published themselves because I, I don't want them to stop doing that. And I think that a lot of people may not know how much they want to be the cameraman or, the, or in front of the camera. And I think that's just a great thing to play with every day, almost every hour some days, and just learn to play uh, various games. Um, I talk about our dreams, talk about designs and things we like, but, but mostly get you know, visual things going on. We've made charcoal. We've tried to cook pottery with uh, intermittent success. We could get better at that. Uh, woodworking, stone carving. Uh, we take care of chickens and rabbits. There's no rabbits at the moment, so the vegans can take a break until I get them, and then they can threaten to kill me again. And most vegans should not come here. Uh, I have had vegans here who were just perfectly fine, and I was perfectly happy to feed them a vegan diet. We changed the, the kitchen thingy a little bit, and we just served mostly, mostly vegan food to everybody uh, more at those times. Um, but I always want meat to be an option too. It's, it's part of what I think is a, a, the experiment, is how can we raise meat, how can we have animal products in the least barbaric and evil and unhealthy way possible, the, the healthiest, the, the most positive, the funnest, where uh, you take great care for the perceived desires of the animal. Um, and like you don't cage them generally, don't cage birds anyway, let other birds go. Uh, not if you brought them from South America to Chicago. But um, <laughs> this exotic bird trapping is just evil as hell. Um, so, um, what was I talking about? Oh, vegans. But I have had vegans that were nice. And then we're trying to, you have know, break. So I see that they should attack somebody else, you know, because I show them how I do the meat here. And that pisses them off. Well, I'm doing the kind of recording somebody else would sneak in to do if I didn't want anyone to see it. Uh, and I'd rather just have it be educational and say, this is the best way I know of to do the things we're doing. And it's better than the industrial meat system that poisons us, is expensive, takes tax subsidies, uh, requires a lot of transportation, um, has some other health problems I'm not an expert on. Um, but we eat too much meat anyway, and we, we get it from the wrong places. When you get it from the wrong animals, uh, it's done wrong. Now, I, I'm willing to listen to somebody pencil out for me how certain things work. But, and, and I'm not, I don't know, I'm not that, I mean, there's cows out on the lake bed, you know, whatever. I can imagine a lake bed being a fucking lush garden of wonderfulness. Um, I hope that they would try that in a couple places and see what the benefits are. And I think if I was going to, make advice to Harakuro, I would do that. Uh, I don't know anybody who lives in Harakuro that well. In fact, I don't know anyone. I know people in other little towns, but... I'm going to go buy a hat there soon, though, so maybe I'll run into somebody who seems nice and smart and I can ask the question. All I have to ask is, is do, you know, can I give you guys seeds? That's an easy one. And that you could put along the fences uh, and maybe in a place where cows don't eat the baby trees. And make groves. Make uh, you. You can even sculpt them later, and I can tell them that. You can have be hedgerows, and my goal is to plant trees that actually grow pretty big, um, and make a beginning of a hedgerow. And they may not quite be expecting them to be that big, but I can say, well, you top them off, and then you make them thicker and useful. And they might do that. They might sculpt them. If they don't sculpt them, well, as I suggest, I will suggest it in writing. Then it grows into a bigger more productive tree and it's a weird shape but then baby trees will show up everywhere and pretty soon you will have a supply of firewood on the lake bed and also a supply of shade and natural living for all of the people they could plant a park in multiple spots around Harakuro and the more the better um, you could give them whatever they want you could give them capuline um, capuline uh, uh, taken by air layering from the good capuline. Um, and we also could up our capuline reproduction system to give them, you know, five gallon bucket sized ones. But also, if we go at the right time of the year and we just bury a bunch of seeds, we could check how long did it take to just bury a line of seeds we collected and how, what was our germination rate. And it could be that it's the smartest way to go. So dumping seeds around at various times of the year is brilliant. Just rake them into the ground and see how they do. Uh, there's certain times that are better. 
and those times are June, July is really awesome, and then you may need to water whatever it was the first year, you may not. But anyway, I need to make a whole plan for how, how I can suggest that this whole town accept seeds that are native, they're from right here, um, and I'll, if I give them any non-natives, I'll tell them, but they already know about stuff like walnuts and things like that. So they're not, they're pretty educated about things. But anyway, they don't have a source right now of trees easily moved in the right way, whether it's by seed or seedling, uh, to kind of create foresty oases out there. I guess oasis is a wrong word. It's already surrounded by like canals and waterways. Um, and I'm not sure why they haven't dug in more to kind of make inlets. I, I don't know why they couldn't make a, a well-designed series of canals coming in from the lake. Uh, they actually get almost out to Hanizio. And it would be extremely interesting thing to wonder about to make a dock or a land bridge to Hanizio. You know what? I don't like it already. Because it's a fucking island. Uh, you could make a dock, but not a bridge. A dock might be helpful to people. It could help uh, Harakuro. You'd have to ask people at Harakuro about that. That's a massive thing. Let's forget about that idea. I don't know if you'd buy anything. Um, they could definitely make sure that their bird preserve is both protected and that birding type people like to go there. It just gives people who have enough wealth to be birders a reason to stop near your town. Try and sell them a sandwich or something and uh, whatever else they might need. You know what? They might need to charge their cameras and shit. You could offer them free charging station, you know, just for small items like, uh, you know, your camera and your stuff like that. It's really good outlets with three prong outlets. So uh, that's better. Uh, actual wiring, you know, would be good. Um, and keep it secure because you now have a space in which their camera equipment goes if you were to build one of those or if you, you were to use one of those. Um, uh, if you're driving in a car, you should be able to charge your shit while you're driving. So you need to buy a, a low wattage inverter. 75 watts to 150 watts, I think is pretty normal. I don't, I'm not an expert on these things. But this is another form of equipment you would get if you had a car. You would have USB ports in your car to charge things and you would also be able to plug in your laptop or a three prong object to charge it. That's really actually an important feature and you can buy that at AutoZone. Buy the right one. I don't know which one it is, but don't buy a shitty one. Uh, don't buy too expensive one. Really useful advice, isn't it? Um, cars have GPSs now. I think that's great. I don't know how to use them. I've hardly seen one. But I'd love to see your GPS if you show it to me. Uh, I love that kind of stuff. I like Google Earth a lot and all that. Um, other advice for documentarians. I'm in the red now. i got to wrap this up quick. Is get dynamic with it. If you're going to be on camera. Uh, ouchies. If you're going to be on camera, then play and, and move. Be very careful how you move your camera. Things get really blurry. Don't do that ever. And I'm not a big fan of vertical um, format either. I want you to try and justify to me why vertical format is good. I used to use it a tiny bit, but I hate it. I want all the footage to be able to fit together. And so it's kind of one or the other. And people are really shitty at recording in vertical format. It's very much set up for one person. And who knows, maybe if it's a talking head, that's okay. But I still want to see the trees behind them. So don't do vertical format, probably. You want to see the stuff around you. I mean, when I'm walking around, I'm not always just doing it random. I'm, I'm trying to actually walk by things of some interest, right? And later on, I could cut in something that described it. Like, which dog is that? It's a test. Can you see the dog? Hi, sweetums. Ah, they're lazy in the daytime. That is Boogie. Like Boogeyman. His brother is Coco. And Coco is a character like Boogeyman in Spanish. Uh, we've cut the bottom parts of these cedars off because they're kind of making the road too nar narrow. We wanted a wide road right here. It's the widest road in the Bosque. We have burned stumps here. And you can go two ways here. Essentially, we're going to make this kind of be into a two-way road and or have parking available. Uh, I do not know what will happen with that. Uh, when you're here, we can talk about land design if you want to. I, I'm trying to make videos on my own on that. 
but we can walk around and we can question my plans for the place. I would love that because I want to enhance this place. That is my dedication. And uh, when you're here, you're partly dedicated to documenting that. So, you know, we might have a competition occasionally or something, but we're really trying to figure out um, how to be. And don't go around questioning everything all the time. It depends on the context. Um, feel free to write things up if you think them or share them or whatever. Uh, if you're walking around just being critical of shit, fuck off. This place has been a pain in the ass to create, and, you know, I'm doing it, and I know I'm part of the pain in the ass. Whatever. Everybody is. At least I'm doing it. This string's not supposed to be there. This is becoming a great place out here. It looks a little dry right now, but that's also the time of year. Anyway, uh, so don't be afraid to to say tough stuff, but also self-center, self-censor. Let's cover that real briefly again, because that's going to be out there. And don't think you're going to edit it out later. Like, I'm just probably going to publish this and not, not edit it at all. And I said things that could be offensive, like I said fuck and stuff. Oh, well, deal with it. You know? Again, the idea is that we're just hanging out. It's a little one-sided, but uh, I'm bearing my soul to you in a lot of ways. All the things I think and feel, not all of them, but what I feel comfortable with. You should self-censor on anything that your employer wouldn't like. Uh, you should not uh, break social boundaries uh, in any way that would embarrass you later. Uh, I don't know what I think about uh, sex in the Bosque, for example. Uh, I've had it. But I'm a different case because I live here. So it's case by case. Uh, you know, who comes here? You know, couples, you know, they should go somewhere where they're too noisy next to other people. But um, I don't know. But I'm not real active here because I'm in an odd role with people who come here. And I'm inviting them to my home. And it's kind of, uh, I'm a very shy guy, you know, always. So there haven't been too many visitors. Uh, uh, come through that I've had any kind of a relationship with but some real nice people and some of them not very long unfortunately and others of them fortunately the science behind this place is just really amazing so there is the design of the land but the other thing is the design of the culture now there's food food is pretty locked down um, you can introduce new foods if you wish and you apply to do that you will say, uh, on a form probably, I haven't set that up, that up yet, you will say, I am so-and-so, and this is a form just for people in the Bosque, or s somebody who gets to vote, uh, for this meal we should cook, we should, no for, no, for this event, there should be a special dish, request for special dish, and there should be a, a section for links to recipes, there should be a section uh, stating why that food fits into the Bosque philosophy of eating, because we have one damn near religious about that idea that, that what we do, what we eat, how we eat, everything that goes in our mouth affects us so hugely, you know? And I, I eat really well in some ways and perhaps not in, some, in other ways I don't. Um, and I hope, but I hope you want to do that too and that's very important to you. Uh, we have a way to do that. And um, we can t I'll make a whole other video. This, see, these topics are all really interesting. You can start talking about them now if you want as a documentarian. And, and, or as a, a participant, you can start saying, I think this. You know, why not? Try it. <sighs> oh, fucking motherfucker. Oh, my rib is still very sore. I uh, broke it. <sighs> um, if somebody does, you know, I mean, don't let someone do an interview that's too personal. Like at three in the morning and you're talking with somebody, I guess if they know they're being recorded, whatever, that's fine. I'm tempted to centralize things and say that all media goes into one place and then we do the dailies and then that gets distributed out. Or it could be everybody just publishes their own shit the way they want. The reason I don't like that is because I think there's a lot of creators out there and if they have the right footage from multiple cameras that they can edit together things that are really amazing really easily. In other words, they can drag uh, Phillips uh, pictures and movie clips into a timeline and, and then they can drag uh, uh, Melissa's or Juanita's 
clips into the, into there. And then if we if then a suite of editors, I, I mean, we could just publish a lot of source. We could just publish very liberally. Uh, so I think it has to get centralized in order to make a cohesive show. But that's a whole bunch of work. So that's a very different concept. I don't know. And I can make different agreements with different people. If I trust that they're going to publish and publish well and stuff, that's great. I do have limited Wi-Fi right now. And so if I ever get like uh, Elon Musk satellite speeds or something, then there's no problem. We can all publish everything. But for right now, I have limited bandwidth. I've thought about renting a place in uh, town mainly for having enough electricity to edit all night with multiple editors uh, and upload capacity. And I don't know whether it's better to just upload and the and the uh, internet will itself edit it enough that there will be a way to, you know, hook the clips together. It shouldn't be difficult uh, to just place clips uh, and publish them that way. And then they'll, they'll, get, they'll edit themselves if you upload them in high enough resolution. Because if you're saying they're Creative Commons, for example, which I'm not sure I want to do. In fact, that's a really big decision to be made. Is are we willing to release the whole thing as Creative Commons? In which case, we can just publish source. People can edit together things that they own. Um, there are rules on that, maybe. Like, you can't ridicule people. Uh, or maybe, maybe that's part of our contract. We try and define ridicule. But it's a scary notion to say that everybody is the publishing mechanism in the world. You know, and then, it's, and then it's a little limiting to say, well, you know, there's like 20 channels in the Bosque at the moment, Instagram, YouTube, whatever else, and things being written. And it would be nice to somehow be able to correlate these into a, a, almost a newspaper format or a or channel you can watch. And you can see, oh, there's a clip by this camera, and I'm going to follow this camera and playing on that camera's track, you know. Uh, or maybe you could even, this would be odd, you'd have to tag the whole clips. You could say uh, each, each uh, clip is tagged by location, and it might have two locations because it may have moved. So we could have a start location and a finish location. In the case of this long-ass video, I've been walking around a bunch, and you'd have to post a GPS map, and it wouldn't matter. But later on, this video will get post, uh, pasted into a virtual bosque anyway. My streets are... Ah, fuck. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, I probably shouldn't even be doing this right now. Actually, I should be resting and shit. But resting is really boring. And I've been doing plenty of that and stewing thoughts around my head. And again, you'll have to decide which of those thoughts to record or not. So don't embarrass people with a rule. I know violence should be obvious, but that's not a camera rule. That's just a fucking rule. And don't puff up at each other like men do sometimes. I don't know what I think about drinking, and I think I'll have different rule sets around drinking in different places and different times. That seems like the great way to socially experiment of how the vibes of different kinds of groupings go. You know, uh, you know, late night drinking of alcohol doesn't correlate with the best behavior, does it? And it doesn't use the light. And the idea is to get up early, bright and bushy, you know, having had as much deep, wonderful sleep as you can, and you're at work to uh, perceive the universe, add it to your previous perceptions, reevaluate, enjoy the process of meeting different people and experiencing a different environment, a very natural environment, and mesh into that in way, any way you want. Uh, you don't need to really announce that as your religion. I get a little religious, but God, for God's sake, don't be more religious than I am. Uh, well, I didn't know what that means. We'll see about that. Religion is an odd word. But uh, in other words, I don't want to hear about it. I don't even give a shit if you're going off to meditate or not. Just go do it. And some people like to say they're going to go meditate because I think that makes them sound cool. And especially the way they talk about it, that I should meditate. Yeah, maybe I should meditate. I don't know. But I don't like being told what to do. And, uh, you know, I dabbled a little bit. And I already go into enough weird states of mind anyway. So who the fuck is going to tell me what I need to do as far as how to operate my head? My head is a very different head than theirs, and uh, they have no business trying to be so smug about, you know, what I need to do with my head. Oh, I wonder if there's a big nest up there. That'd be cool. It's a big lump of leaves. Up there I girdled some trees. This is a view of Lake Pottsboro right here. And I'm developing this as the view park. 
It is the largest open area there is. It is uh, good for, it has been good for yoga. Uh, we have to kind of brush it clean every time because right now there's all these like leaves and branches on it. Um, I'm pretty sure this would be a, a location at which we would want to dump a bunch of sawdust. We may wish to grade it a little bit first because uh, it pools up in one spot when it rains and then the sawdust can be soggy for too long and it's annoying. So it's really better to level it a little bit. I like it that it's sloped back, right? I think a lot about land design here. It's sloped back to, towards here. So any water flow is going to come this way, not down slope. And we're sending in the direction of this cactus garden over here, which doesn't need a lot of water, but, you know, plants like water usually. They really do. I've been watching a lot of plants here for a long time. These bird of paradise here are barely surviving. Anyway, this would then be that. Uh, we could make it a plaza. Um, I am tempted to keep it as a soft sawdust place for now. I believe it's just the primo, out, close, close in its own space with the fucking best view that I'm improving because I girdled those trees down there and hopefully they'll die. I'm trying to kill them for like five years, but I, I did a wussy attempt. This last attempt was murderous. And they're going to become housing for birds. So you'll be able to sit right here, watch the birds. They're backlit this time of the day, so evening would probably be better. I guess, yeah. Which depends on your camera equipment. Anyway, uh, so it's soft here. There's a trail off that way. I'm not sure what's going to happen down there, but there's some great shade trees here. So leveling out some spots to sit in here and have metal chairs and tables would be awesome. Uh, get rid of the dangerous fight hazard over there. It's awful. Uh, there's a hazard we created where someone could fall in it. That's just terrible. We are bad, bad people for doing that. I told people to do it. It's my fault, actually. But, you know, they could just say, oh, I was just following orders. No, they're fine. And it's not that dangerous. And I need to finish it. It's more like it. We're digging this really cool, uh, oh, well, thing. Actually, there's going to be a whole bunch of flat area dug out over there. So there's the sculpting of the land, but one of the things you can explore is think as an anthropologist when you're when you're on, when you have a camera, and try and figure out what is this place, who are these people, what do we think as a group, uh, based on what's already written and is a tradition of the space, and also based on anything new that anyone has to bring to the table, uh, and we'll listen to anything. Uh, people should not come in and think that they're equal. They should come in timidly, not scared. I'm mean, not actually fucking timid. No, in fact, that's a bad idea. But I mean, they should come in with great awareness of how they affect others. And But don't launch your big project right away. Talk to people and say, I need this, and I need this place and time, and, and we can advise you. Because I think I was mentioning earlier about how we had that one, uh, we had that one, oh, man. We've had the three theater acts here, three theater um, performances, and there's actually been more because there's been ones around campfires and that weren't scheduled and all that. But three that we met first with a cast and we tried to record it. What my least favorite thing about all of them is they weren't recorded well. Now, the last one I might be, no, one of them I might be wrong and I gotta go find that footage and use it. Everybody's like in this underground room. It's actually a cistern that was empty. And, and, uh, we have like a smoke machine in there, a fog machine, which we were making sure we didn't kill anybody and we were ready to get them out of there. We think about all the shit. But I don't think the smoke machine we decided was bad. Uh, it sure was visually great. And so I was recording down there and there was a lot of yelling and shit because we were doing this fake sci fi thing. Um, and it didn't really matter how it worked out. It was everyone was improvising. So it was funny. Uh, Anyway, there's so many ideas of things to publish here. I don't know where I lost my train of thought. Okay, I'm really going to say goodbye now. I'm tired. I've been walking. i got things to write over here. Message people. I should be making little clip movies about everything I think and post those instead of uh, just writing a note to a person, especially if it takes a long time. I should probably make a video for every single one of my Quora answers. You can make a video response to a Quora answer of mine if you want. I've written some long, smart ones, by you know, in my opinion, but... You know, other people have different points of view, so sometimes I will listen to them if they're polite and good people and seem smart. 
and aren't threatening me to have to believe what they want me to believe. So anyway, good luck. Uh, get, back, get right to your recording and publishing. And I wouldn't even suggest waiting very long between recording and publishing. Just record, publish, record, publish as much as possible. And get, make, But make sure you're censoring yourself on whatever topic you want to talk about. Uh, oh, that's another topic I guess I hadn't thought of is don't be a gossipy dumbass and stuff. I, I know there's shows like that, uh, like you know they put people on an island and then there's this group of people and that group of people and then they gossip and say this about that person. It's all a fucking fake game. I find it relatively boring. Now I've seen a bunch of it, and I didn't find it boring at first. That's why I've seen a bunch of it. I love I love the idea. So actually, I'm not dissing those shows at all. They're one of my inspirations. But what I realized as I watched The Island, for example, uh, was that I didn't have as deep a, a caring for the characters for a few reasons. I didn't see any higher goals. I felt like it was a starvation game. And that the stress was so high that we're essentially enjoying the show by watching them suffer. And I do appreciate that. I love good survivalism stuff, and I think about that I live in the fucking woods. Uh, but I don't know. It seemed like um, they would like there to be conflict. I would like instead, because and those people don't have any social contract with each other. They're not a group. They're just a random bunch of people. And that is fun to watch, you know, like how we deal with uh, evolution of culture in a, in, a, in a small group. But I would actually like to define what the group's values are first and cast for that and cast not for conflict, but for people who already agree on the majority of things that need to get done and how. Because I've already seen them on video um, and we'll be real open about that stuff. And, you know, I, I can talk about projects and why I like some projects and not others. And I'll try to be nice to people because uh, it's hard because I meet all kinds of people and some of them are not who I want to have their ideas strongly um, given to me because I don't agree. So, oh. God damn. I got so much shit to do that I've got to do right now. Anyway, that's another thing I want to do is, as, as a camera person, as a documentarian, is think about where you should be. Um, like, anticipate an event, if there's an event occurring and scheduled. And if it's one that, uh, on the schedule, says, um, very public, like, open to photographers. Like, we would like photographers here. For example, a performance then you should be a good cameraman by showing up early with your card already and all that stuff. You can even talk to the director or anybody in charge or even go to the meeting if you're going to do a really good job. Because a, a performance also may be one, I, I believe this very, very strongly, I do not think performances should have a whole bunch of phones being held up. I think it looks annoying and it makes me lose respect for the people doing it. I don't know. I'm probably just an old grumpy guy. I've never been to one of those places. They seem fictional to me, but I know they're out there. Ah, I see them on YouTube. Oh. oh, I should have grabbed the battery when I went in there. That's why I went in there. God damn, I'm not too bright. Okay, so I go in there, I switch it, and then I try to remember that I'm talking about documentation, documenting the Bosque, and it's a weird philosophy. There's nothing else like that. And then I put the dead one in the char charger, and I take the live one, and I hope it's charged. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. I got some other great notes out here. I thought I'd take my notebooks. I write a lot of notebooks, and I figured that this is one, and you may wish to do this as well. I recommend it in your life. Uh, start making lists of things that are going on that are important, you know, like get yourself organized. Uh, organize your day, especially here. You got to use the light. I will make some nighttime filming areas, but pretty much you're not going to be filming at night. So what you should do is go to sleep at night so that you can get in tune with everybody else and what they're doing. 
because there's just almost nothing useful you can do at night. I guess I could have a, a recording area where uh, it, was, it was comfortable at night, it was small, it was for recording, not a hangout spot. Um, could be near where one is sometimes, but sound insulated, where you can record what you want to say into the camera and have it be well lit and with electricity. So we can provide infrastructure for you to make your recording ability way better. And so I need to be advised on what would help you the most. I believe, if, for example, you could uh, have a store here, right? So a store that you could actually be able to drop off your charger and batteries and that during certain hours of the day, you could check your batteries back out. This would be a battery charging library place, kind of like a, a those places you leave your backpack guarderia. They guard your shit for you. What they're guarding for you in your own locked thing. Maybe locked. I mean, lockers would be great. Fuck it. Let's use lockers. Um, and uh, it should, you know, be enough to slow down anybody trying to get them. Uh, and then they get their device charged. Or their extra battery charged. And you can just be checking those out and checking those in whenever the store's open. That'd be a good system to set up. Uh, the other option is to have more camping locations and or cabanas that have a, their own electricity and stick a meter on them to make sure they're not using too much. But we want to encourage them to use small amounts of charging. We would very much like them to have their batteries charged and the best time to do that is at night. And so if for the, basically for the highest media producers, the, the highest value ones, they are going to be where there's electricity. I even have uh, places out here on the way to what was a volleyball court and I've got a spot I can put electricity before it and I've got a spot where there already is electricity at the end and so somebody with an RV uh, somebody with a tent uh, nobody with an RV could plug in like with full power to an RV because that's ridiculous RV use huge amounts but the point is to create a little um, spot that has uh, maybe a, a small kitchenette barbecue why not People like that. I had thought about building a whole building over there, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll just have to see. That that whole park area is a huge mystery. It's it's crazy. Uh, so I have not swapped, swapped my battery yet. It's amazing how it's see it says it's dead, but it's not. Anyway, I'll see you in part two of Brian's advice to people documenting in the Bosque. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. This camera is tricky. You really got to know your camera. Sometimes you think you're recording with this camera, but you're not. And that's a big shame. Because uh, you lose out on cool footage. So you got to learn your camera enough so that you don't very often say, Oh, I messed something up. If you mess something up, it means that you avoided fixing it before it happened. In other words, learn your equipment. Uh, even the modes you don't normally want. And in general, I'm, I'm for real straightforward shooting. Um, you can look up, uh, there's like, what's that, Dogma? Dogma something style of filming, where they made rules about no natural light and other rules. Hey, that's cool. I like that. I like that it allows for the production to not be inhibited by too much equipment. It limits you naturally. What I can do here is set up a series of sets. And you can learn what, where those sets are and how to use them. Okay, I have various of them. Here's a, a dirt circle. Okay, it's not much to write home about, is it? But uh, I'm actually going to use, I think, mobile metal chairs in there, outdoor furniture. I've got power run out here, although the dogs have eaten the cable shit off. Fucking dog could die of electricity or something. And then uh, with that lighting system, have a very small fire, it, it, primarily one that is very cosmetic as much as possible. Um, this kind of rustic thing on the outside, we need to remove some rebar from it. And uh, we can plant outside of this. I just like it as a visual base. And so I think right here, we go ahead and we do plant either willow or cedar. 
I'm going to go with willow. If we can prove that 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 uh, that that can survive up here. So this year we'd probably try a few pieces. Try and see how they do in comparison to other ones we put in nicer areas. Pay attention to the topics of the day. Uh, every day there is a is it world something day a special day uh, and we do these things on it uh, and you'll have the schedule of some of those upcoming ones some will be surprises and some uh, will just do everything I, I would like to have all holidays here I did once go to an all holidays party and they did all the holidays they did not do all the holidays they did a bunch of them that were really fun uh, I believe it's primarily uh, U.S. holidays. That's what I remember. But people know U.S. holidays in the U.S., so it also makes it easier. So I'm going to have holidays that are easy to host and do. I don't want to get extravagant with them. But uh, there's always time for costumes and special foods. And, uh, yeah. Oh, that's so much work out here. On the other side of this uh, round thing here that would become then a broadcasting studio because it's right, I forgot to tell you what it is. Uh, it's, it's near internet. I can do internet to here. I, c I could run uh, even ethernet if I had to. I could always, uh, whatever, work out. And uh, so inside this spot, I'll let these trees keep growing. These trees are gonna be bonsai trees. And they're going to fit within a cedar dome. The dome is going to be, the cedar is going to be planted around the outside because I like the rusticness of the, of the cob there. And then the cedars will come up. Now they may not even be right next to it. Like they might want to leave some unknown amount of space, like at least a foot and a half. Maybe if we did it right, they could go a meter away. And we'd have room in here to put other things like, uh, you know, fragrant plants and shit like that. So, you know, as we think about what are we going to do with this, we're trying to sculpt design-wise, like, how would we use the space? It has two entries. One is going that way. That goes in the direction of the toilet. A bunch of shit you could trip over. A place you could fall down. And then the bathroom. Well, that's pretty stupid. Fuck. It's kind of hard to literally move mountains. It's a slow process. Um, I'm actually going to do massive work up there. I envision that being a, a people cluster. The way that I'm preserving the land is, is by doing a architecture in a way, uh, very, very particular ways. Um, when you do come here, you're coming into my space, basically. I think that's pretty obvious. And I expect certain things from you. I expect you to not come here to humiliate me. And I won't humiliate you. I would also like it if you did not humiliate yourself. Oh, that's always a little uncomfortable. I've had a lot of young people through. I like young people. Uh, lots of them have big crazy ideas. I prefer the ones that got slightly older and have proven that they can do something interesting creatively and that they can do it in a way that enhances what I see as kind of a positive vibe of the place. So, uh, documentarians are a very important part of that. I would like documentarians who stay longer. I would like the ones that get used to being in the right spot at the right time. And making people look good and, and drawing people out. Documentarians. I'll give you more example of, uh, I guess I'm, giving you, I'm doing tour clips and uh, other stuff together. Uh, this is an Undine roof with skylights. Undine, no, not Undine, Anduline. It's a wavy, um, well, everything is dirty out here. Everything is super dirty. Oh my God. Uh, I shouldn't even shit like this. This could be rotten. Sit over there. I can't trust anything around here because it's too old. Uh. 
So this is an interesting spot. Here's the plan for the, no, it's not the rooster house, I lied. This is the dog house. We're so far away from the chickens, it's ridiculous. There's an identical one down by the chickens. That one's called the chicken house. And this one here is concrete poles and a lattice work to hold up a very high roof with oak trees around it that are actually kind of annoying depending on your point of view and what you want. You don't have to capture water everywhere, but it would be really nice. And the forest would be more lush for it. The whole place would be filled with amazing plants if we can capture more water and then water during the dry season. So we have to have a surplus. Um, that is really strange for me to say because I'm against irrigation, right? And uh, I guess there's always exceptions to things. And uh, it's all cost benefit. Right now, this water is just lost to right there. I could make sure it channels into kind of a pond down here. It's actually doable with this landscape. It wasn't my plan. Um, capture it would be pretty cool. I can always use water in this area and I could even expand the uh, composting toilet a little bit. There's a composting toilet right over there. This is called the doghouse because it was used, it's fenced in with uh, cyclone fencing. Pretty high too, because dogs are very persistent. And then this kind of not really well made door. It's, it's okay, it's working currently. Did this get fixed? Ugh. It did, that's fantastic. So that is a space I currently have, and its only current utility is to keep dogs in or out. We have not been doing a lot of that lately. We have done it if they're sick or something, or there's a reason. Uh, this needs to be transformed into a human and dog compatible space, which will have one or the other. It uh, needs to have uh, tables and uh, spots to sit where you use Wi-Fi. You'll have electricity, you'll have LED lighting, uh, probably not a campfire, but probably a wood stove. So you could cook hot beverages on it. And just the smallest of things, um, some kind of Bosque made energy bars, something healthy you wouldn't pick out on, but will keep you sustained. Maybe a few pieces of fruit. All this land in here, uh, well, first of all, this needs to get cleared off. It, these are tiles. They're really valuable and good building material. But I have to figure out where I want a porch that I don't care if it's going to be that, that great. But it's the most useful to me at this time. And I don't know the answer. All this area needs to be terraced properly so that it can be navigated uh, by people walking on it. This is a high, a high, high traffic area potentially. Uh, we should plant uh, hedges to protect the view from having people get too close to it. In fact, we could practically wall it in from this side. May even end up with a tiny private courtyard in there or something. Um, but people should not be getting that close to the view from this angle. We might even cut it off right from this circle um, off into a trail that goes really well marked down to the, uh, the toilet down there. And then start to develop it. Now, then I have to make decisions about where do I want people in general up here. Uh, this general area is called the Mesa, right? So right now I'm designing spots for use just right near near the view. The only spot with internet, right? This one can be used as a, as a broadcasting thing. That one could also have broadcast uses. If it has internet, then uh, we can hang up banners and do things. And if we have... LED lighting in there and sometimes light of day we're golden that could be like made into a set really of any kind in fact I'd be open to proposals on what kind of set to make but what I really want is a set infrastructure that allows me to change the set well like change panels of some things and they can be reusable I like reusable quite a bit uh, and people can use their imagination if they need to if I need New York I could just go to Morelia and buy a tapestry that is New York and we stand in front of it. It doesn't even have to fool you and think we're in New York, but now it's set in New York. 
we could do some interesting theater with really minimal tools. Um, and I don't even know what theater means in this case. I don't care, but I would love to see more experimentation. And I think that's one of the joys of having people here who are not professionals, is that they're here to be hopefully the best of who they are and explore some other ways of being. Um, what it's like to be in the Bosque uh, is not documented as well as it should be. I had a lot of people here, but it was years before I took any pictures. And it was years before I thought of the idea of encouraging it. And only a few people have really dug into making interesting documentation here or editing. I do have a lot of footage. Should be organized. Uh, if it's not documented, it can't succeed. And the cool thing is, is that my subject matters are, are diverse. That, uh, that I know about a lot of different kinds of stuff. And I don't believe anything unless it's really proven to me pretty damn well. But I also try and predict the future. That's an odd mix. Those are hard things to do. I will intermittently fail and succeed and have a good time. Uh. Damn, I'm thirsty as shit. I gotta get some water. Uh, that's another thing generally people should do here is stay hydrated. That's for everybody. Uh, you know, I don't know how crazy people should get about that, but like right now I'm walking around in the sun. I'm wearing a heavier shirt than I should. Uh, 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 oh my god. Fuck. Whoops. Don't fucking fall down. Uh, so I fell down once. This is the kind of thing, I'll tell you about it, but it's kind of, you know, you may or may not want somebody to publish. <sighs> if you're feeling immensely emotional about something, I would recommend not publishing it. That's my advice. The Bosque Village I imagine I would like to exist and how it would exist is that people stay mellow that they're centered and uh, don't bother other people and don't be bothered. And if someone bothers you, learn how to say no to that. I don't know what I'm talking about exactly, which things they are, but I'm just setting that as the vibe. You know, uh, no means no. Um, maybe does not mean yes. Uh, and it depends, you know, the, the dance of consent is strange. Uh, I'm not just talking about intimate things. I'm talking about the whole way we deal with each other. Um, uh, 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 fuck. Uh, New shirt. I should be in shorts. It's hot out there. Oh, they're too hard to put on sometimes. Well, I should get some more sun anyway. We'll see. Maybe I should sit in the sun with my hat. That'd be cool. Oh. So I think everybody who's here wonders about their role. And I need to define better very specific roles and how they're different than other things. What the responsibilities are and what they're offered. And be very specific. And uh, if you uh, do things in a way that is outside of your role, like if you uh, try to bully suggestions into commands, uh, for whatever you're doing, uh, that's not very polite usually. 
Uh, we generally like to write thing, everything down. This is our conflict resolution solution. And part of it is designed, part of it is designed to uh, solve conflicts by defining them so well and the variations of views about how we should do everything and what the repercussions socially are of everything. Basically, the, the physics of human civilization and culture, then uh, it's going to be difficult. Sherilyn has just driven up here. I wonder why. I don't think we're going anywhere. Maybe she's carrying something. So now I'm documenting Sherilyn. Uh, I actually avoid uh, recording license plates, but if I cared about that, I should just cover them. And I don't know. This place is pretty transparent anyway. I mean, people shouldn't come here if they're too secretive about, like, if they're hiding from the law or something. I've had a few people come here uh, or contact me, contact me, and it's kind of clear that they're taking off with the kid, and they need a place to hide out. They're kidnapped. That's kidnapping, by the way, uh, because if you're going doing it against the cultural law of whatever sense of your culture, then you're kidnapping. I don't want to be involved in that, so those folks are not actually welcome here. And I've had a few other criminals suggest uh, to be here of different kinds, but those are different stories. So, I'm here with one other person at the moment. I would like to say we've been working on videos all the time. We have failed, we have slacked off because there is no system in place that is forcing us to do it. I wish to create a system to be in place that does force us to do it. Uh, that is not fascist, that's called directing. Uh, uh, and that's part of the social contract. Uh, this place does not exist as a festival, a party, uh, a, could be a commercial opportunity, you know? I'm, I'm okay with certain kinds of commerce, and I'm not with others. So, you know, I would accept people who are, who are coming from sponsors, for example, um, especially if they're sponsoring us or something, and they send entertaining people. They could even contact us, some, contract with somebody on our list. Maybe I need to make a list of people who are very likely pre-approved to Bosque Village. They still have to apply. Uh, they should have different rule set than other people. They have the standard rule set and the celebrity addendum. And then uh, if we pre-approve them, a sponsor could say, oh, that person's already been cast as acceptable. We like them and we will hire them and we'll pay them this amount. We could even post on there what the amount is. You know, say it's variable depending on this, 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 and this. You know, it could be, you know, $1,000 a week. And your product becomes uh, used in uh, two or three activities. Uh, you can tell us what you think good activities would be. We will counter by saying some of those we don't like, and here's some you haven't thought of. And these are really easy for us to do, or these aren't. And if they aren't, then we probably don't want to do them. But uh, maybe. But we might charge more if we did certain things. Uh, I don't like blatant advertising. So I guess this is a message to sponsors, potential sponsors. Um, I, I'm not really into blatant advertising entirely. I don't even like saying on there, like, and this episode was sponsored by. I'd rather do pl more product placement. And we know which products uh, we like, and we show them on camera quite a bit. Um, sometime randomly if we want. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we'll have fun with how we can, like, fun with product placement. Um, we're only going to do it on products we like. And so that's one thing is you would apply to see if uh, we would want you or we would contact you and say we do want you because we know what you're about. You know, like uh, Dr. Bronner seems to be doing great. I like that brand a lot. Uh, and that's because uh, my dad used it. So there's nostalgia there. Uh, I was really bored. So I actually read the label a lot of times, you know, because sometimes we were camped out somewhere far. And... Uh, I just had a lot of time on my hands, and so I like that, and I come from a Christian background, and so there, you know, some of that was like me processing what that message was. Why does this message exist? And uh, now his son runs a company. Uh, this is Dr. Bronner's natural soap or something. And, uh, and then now his son's running the company, and he's been donating some, to some causes that sound really cool. 
I actually think he would be a good donor here uh, because I think he would appreciate the mixed creative vision of it. Uh, he hopefully would appreciate that it's not complete. You know, uh, it's a great project that I've put a lot into and it's, it's, it's uh, you know, really hard to do. A lot harder than people who say it's easy think it is. <laughs> That's an easy way to say that. Um, you just wouldn't believe it. But I got into here. Uh, the road's been strange. But I know what I'm doing more than ever. Uh, I have some helpers who want to help me, and but they can't do it for free. Um, so I have to help their families out quite a bit. And uh, so I want to do that more, and that's a really great reason to donate, too. Um, is to help out locals here. Um, there's various ways I can do that. Uh, certainly patronizing their business. This is a great time to patronize any local businesses. Like if I want to do an experiment with uh, pottery sculpture or something, I think I should buy the clay from them. Although I think the Sinsunsan stuff might have been higher quality. I'm not sure. Not my, it, mine's been drying on the studio anyway. So make a sculpture. They fire it, right? And then I think I'm cooler. And then you think I'm cooler. And things are cool. So, and then that sets things up for you being able to do the same exact thing. We did try firing here in the Bosque and pottery firing. And uh, two guys had some success with it, but I wasn't paying attention because I was really busy because there was too many people here. And then one time, two people tried it who were just here themselves. And we all kind of knew it was, it was going to be rough. It was just a rough spot, rough goal. And we're really not experts at all. And so I don't think it went that great. Um, but, you know, whatever we learn, it's fun. Oh, thanks. Food just came here. Oh, Hector called me uh, Tuesday. Uh -huh. And he said he was selling food in the plaza. No. Right, but we go next week. Okay. Just we'll checking. Two weeks. Oh, but they, they added that they have mangoes. They're yeah, like, I got mangoes from uh, Danny. Is so it mango season now? I think mangoes are back. All right, they mangoes are back. back. Yeah, and they were cheap at Danny's. I'm hoping they're cheap on the truck. Too. Right, right. Well, we'll see. Because, you know, different times. Right, well, well, we did the price check. Uh, we did the price check of his pr pr produce. We should really do a, a price check somehow with somewhere in Potsquare, like Danny's. Yeah. Danny's would be a good one. Or the guy who delivers. Are you lost? What? Lost? Yeah. Well, that's something I'll talk to you about, too, since I'm way off topic, is um, let's try and keep it scientific. If this goes along with it not being a party. What are we focused on then? Well, we want to learn about what we're doing and why. And we want to simplify life so much that it's a lot easier to learn about it. In complex life, with more uh, movement of money and matter and certain food systems, it's very hard to tell what's actually going on. And I would like to set up a system where you can uh, program a lot of cultural agreements in different ways than is normal. Meaning that if I hear of a custom that they do in Singapore, whether or not I like Singapore or not, I might think that custom sounds really great and install it as a tool to try in the culture. Not necessarily pervasively. It could be at certain times. It could be, it depends on the rule. Uh, it could be at certain times that that rule is uh, existing or that it's suspended or that uh, it could be times of day. It could be a, a day of the week. Uh, some things could have special rules for day of the week. It's fine. Um, places could have rules that could change. So it, it could have a default set of rules for that area, you know. And we'll start to build walls increasingly. Walls scare people a little bit. They, they do divide the forest up. I will give you that. Um, I will try and increase other, as much wildlife as I can. And it may even open up the opportunity for having protected places for wildlife. Uh, because especially, you know, they could have entries just for them or exits. And maybe, I don't know, it depends on the range of the animal. But, you know, we've got a variety of kinds of birds here that really like it. That can be improved. We've had deer here. Uh, that would be great that we can actually make sure we protect that area. And I think it can be improved really easy, mainly by giving the deer water and making sure the dogs don't aren't an aggressive to them at all. I really need to have control of these dogs. I believe uh, I need to get batteries for my electric dog shocking collar. I've never tried it yet. It just, you know, I tried it on me. I have one. The batteries are just dead. Uh, I tried on me to make sure it wasn't that painful, and it wasn't that painful. 
Uh, but it, it's a surprise. It shocks you. <laughs> what a surprise that it sur that shocks you. And uh, I would use it because there's certain behaviors that are very bad that the dogs do. And uh, I don't have as good a control over the pack as I used to before the accident. And then uh, Coco and Boogie are getting big. And if they do do anything wrong, <laughs> then uh, it's going to be a bigger wrong. So I got to be a little more careful. It's not a chihuahua. I did accidentally almost get a chihuahua. I'm really glad I didn't. Um, it was really cute. I was buying fruit and veggies out of a truck in Yotatiro. And there was this crazy, tiny white, really brave chihuahua running around. Totally white and really tiny. Like so tiny you could just pick it up and squish it. It was a puppy. It was just like, I don't know, in human terms it might have been like a brave seven-year-old or something um just zipping around and barking at me and then i try to be friendly and it pretends it's going to let me be friendly and then it gets scared and runs away or barks some more i'm really glad i didn't get it i was so tempted and not that it was for sale uh i didn't know that but that's often is the case but i really don't like yappy dogs at all and so uh if we think about dogs in the bosque i think that topic, it's pretty important because I get qu asked quite a bit, can I come with my dog? And I think what I need to do is do two things. Uh, the dog has to have a profile. So they have to fill out an application, the dog application, so that I know about the dog. If I don't know about the dog, how am I supposed to help you with the dog, whether you're a, a visitor here or whether you're dropping your dog off to doggy summer camp and paying me a little bit for the privilege? Which I, I could do. I could be a dog library. Maybe I should say that, uh, no, that's not going to work. i got a different problem with a dog. Anyway, uh, and then I would need to improve my infrastructure, primarily fencing, real fencing, dog-proof fencing, uh, preferably natural like adobe or cob, which takes a large amount of work, but is extremely natural and flexible. Those are really good attributes. Uh, because if you do build with concrete, you better be really sure you want that concrete there. You know, I think it should be serving its highest possible value. And I think it should primarily, um, as much as possible, be reserved for, for buildings that have an excellent, excellent design. And a lot of effort goes into them, you know. Uh, and then we can build amazing foundations and we can do engineering and um, do it in a way that it's uh, protected very well against earthquake. And uh, that it uses the rain well and just really well made. That's a very different goal architecturally than having a hut that is primarily um, biodegradable and easy to modify and uh, just has minimal services for, uh, let's say, four people who want, really want their space. But it depends on how they're designed, but they're all dug into the slope. I need somebody who does good CAD CAM skills to draw this for me. I can draw them a sketch and they can then make it into something useful and pretty because uh, I don't know how to do that very well. Uh, but uh, I really do need an architect. But those hut clusters will be really great because those can get put up really quickly. Uh, they can be examples of kind of tiny, tiny house living a little bit and sometimes pod house. Um, they could easily have a variety of them, but I'd really like to settle on what I think is a good cost effective thing. Uh, for, let's say that there were four rooms in it. That's a lot of rooms. Uh, set it up so that other people can drop by well. It's very important to have a probably a polycarbonate covered yard. Polycarbonate means you can grow uh, uh, like plants in there really well. I said I don't like polycarbonate. If you can get greenhouse glass that doesn't shatter badly, I think that's the way to go. So uh, probably south facing porches, no, or east facing porches. But I like east because. What's interesting about an eastern one, if you can get sunrises, if you have a clear shot of the sunrise, if it's at the horizon, then you can shoot the sun into your window. And I think that in terms of architectural design, we need to think about with these larger buildings that I'm imagining that go you know, like over this hill right there or down this slope, you know, and they look like those ones in Greece where there's all these cool white buildings stuck together and stuff. And one is doing rain capture for the other and it's all dug into slope, but probably on bedrock. Um, there's an internal corridor. It's like, it's like uh, not evolved. It's planned, 
but it looks kind of um, more fluid than that. I think I would really love to get almost a curvy, shallop uh, um, slope uh, or, or openings, you know. Um, and that's probably not the most efficient, I'm not sure. And maybe it could be done in an efficient way. Uh, or in some other way, I don't know. Oh. The other thing to do is to have wind protected areas. So really what I'm thinking of is it would be great to have spots where even in the slope here, there was a, a bay of windows, right? And I, I would want to think about the angle of them, but usually here vertical would be fine because we're going to face it east. And um, so the sun on the equinox comes up right over Hanitzio. And in the winter time, it goes over there to the south. And in the uh, summer, it goes over there to the north. And it's quite a bit. And so we have to measure that angle. That's a calculation that's published online, so it's easy to look up. I do have trees blocking it, however. And I've cleared one spot of trees that I believe I'm, I'm clearing. I, I grilled them, and then they'll become bird food, bird housing. And then they'll fall down, and I'll get my view. That might take a long time. <laughs> I have no idea. But, you know, and I am unfortunately designing for an exact one view because I've been living in it for months and months and months and months and months. And uh, then I would shoot sunlight in with the, if there was a clear day sunrise. And uh, I think that using that first light is really critical. Um, and, that, and that this entire hill here, uh, this is the steepest hill in the Bosque. And so I'm going to tell you about a, a couple ideas. One, make sure that the view has a smart development that allows the slope to do what it wants. Understand? Like, leave spots open in many cases. Don't make decisions that would limit other decisions. Don't invest labor in digging out or changing something if it's not planned out well. And this is why we stopped on the edge here with the edge of the view over the slope that goes down to the dimple. The steepest area in the property. And all I have down there right now is I dug a little angled trail which needs to be redone. Oh, there it is over there. It's not done very well. It's mediocre. We need to weed whack that, put some chairs down there. I used to have chairs down there, but I stole them from up, from up here. Um, maybe two-person bench metal chairs would be a, a good thing. We could just dig it out of cob. If, is, can cob be a good seat here, and how would we seal it? I think it's a good question. Because we dig into this thing, it's this really rocky soil. Should we bring in cob that's more good, or maybe even clay, and then smooth it over it? And how will that do? And I guess the best thing to do is just try it. Because uh, I don't believe anybody anyway. I like to see it. We'll take some, some work there. So we'll talk more about this edge. Um, there's already a, a, some agave is planted here. That's semi-stupid, but not totally. The reason it's semi-stupid is because I want to have these big plans for this area. But the thing is, my big plans are going to take forever. And they may not even work out. So, oh, there's birds and shit down there. Pretty ones. So, having lateral trails across it is always a good idea. Um, and I think that they need, they currently, there's two that I know of. Uh, and they both need to be cleaned up and widened. And it's a simple digging job. It's easy to direct somebody, and, uh, and that person would be paid to do it. So, because um, we need to control the land. We need to do it. But they have to be a machine to do it. You know, it's, it's work. It's not play. Uh, and uh, it's not a volunteer. It's a worker. It is a guy, probably. could be a woman. But they have to be able to sweat and move dirt. That's it. Sweat, move dirt. And we should have somebody tracking who's moving how much dirt. People can work on different parts of the trail. They can be given a goal of widening it usually. Right now it's just widen the trail. That's the only goal. It's because it's the easiest goal and it opens us up to other opportunities. If I had a bulldozer, I would bulldoze part of the upper part of the rocky ridge 
across into the ladder across the ladder and go cross slope all the way across this and make a one lane road now that's costly too and it might even be dangerous but I think I've got to start somewhere so really I should consult the list and I have a list of all the bulldozer projects which could occur in the Bosque and how much time I think each bulldozer task would take. Me making it up, but I have experience from a past bulldozer project. I'm not trying to get the same driver and machine even. That'd be awesome. Because sculpting the land, I think, is uh, really dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Most of the places I've seen like that were done for housing with bulldozers, they just bulldoze all of it. And they just killed all the soil and they didn't take advantage of the individual beauty of the landscape as it was or try and do something innovative that incorporated uh, uh, existing uh, or quickly placed uh, a, a plan for the ecological uh, rapid development of the entire area uh, and that conclude that includes a lot of wildlife but it certainly includes lots and lots of your favorite plants in the world and I think that's really important to note. As I, as I think about food forest farming is, you know, if I can get a lavender to grow here, I only need one to grow here well, uh, or I need a microclimate. And microclimates give me the most uh, success. But I'm doing it the slowest way possible. Um, and so I do use bulldozers, that's true. And it looks scary. It scared me at first using bulldozers because it was a big bulldozer it wasn't a normal one normally you have those scoop things with a backhoe it was not one of those it was a big one that somebody brought in for something else and then they kind of had it between projects and they were like well fuck it i, I mean i don't i'm making up the negotiation i, I wasn't involved but anyway i got it at a good price I mean, for what it was and for what money i had and and i had them do a list and i was out there with them every day watching i know i don't believe I ever drove the bulldozer I could have easily I could have said I want to drive the bulldozer maybe I did I don't know but it was really interesting because I was learning about it because I was so scared that I would damage things you know I'm always here trying to protect the forest and so it, it I say you know where to put something and he just rips through stuff with this huge machine it's like a big monster and it's like grinding grinding and it's very impressive and the guy's really smart and I also he normally just clears the shit out of everything but I was one of, I was the first person to, to say, okay, well, we're doing it for water flow, you know. So I put roads in where I didn't need roads, single lane road, dirt road, cut into slope. Um, I put them where I didn't need them because I was channeling water on, on, on the whole slope. So the first thing about the roads is the water flow. And of course, you know, where you put that on the slope depends on other uses for things and what your long-term vision for where a building would be or a hut. You know, like if we're going to have these little huts everywhere, then where are they going to go? Well, I want, them in, I want them in slope. I don't want to put them where I'm going to build a different building later, right? That's the dumbest thing and I'm not going to, just not going to do it that way. The only case is we could also start building the bigger buildings and figure out a method of building and an order of building where what we're doing is we are making the compartments and then building onto those and plant and starting out the whole other building. I mean, one of the styles here in Mexico is that people just leave rebar sticking out of their, their roof, right? And then when they have enough money together, then they get the materials together and they built another uh, room on top of that. Well, that's a very interesting model. I would want to read an earthquake analysis of that, uh, how that does, and I would want to overbuild it and say, you know, I want a stronger than normal one, like pretty strong. I think it's a good investment. Don't want buildings to fall down because of cheap materials or cheap labor or bad design, ever, you know? Anyway, so it could be that we, we honeycomb our way up that, but that each part of it is already into is already part of a larger building that goes over the hill right or it, it, there's various forms for it my design is not final i have to talk to more people about it and 
it's a little tricky to talk about. It's a weird spot. We also pull, at the same time, a lot of materials off that hill. Quite a few. Uh, that's because we're going to be doing a lot of digging in. We're going to create view up there. There's going to be lateral pedestrian spots and sitting spots. And you're going to have a view of the lake from the top of that hill. That is the plan. Now, I need to walk back up there and make real sure before I do anything drastic. But I don't have to do anything drastic. For now, it's our materials mine. Uh, if we get good at, at smashing rock, which we're looking at these powered digging bars, you know, that, and that, that you either slam like this or they're actually electric, and you can just cut through shit like that. They're noisier, you got a generator, all this, but hey, that's what does the job. And so it can either be, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of man hours of tired, annoying people, or it can be one guy who has to use a really noisy machine for a shorter time and we do burn gasoline. Those are the kind of choices you have to make about technology and, and your long-term plans. That place up there is called Sanctuario, the top of it. And I've already leveled out part near it. It's pretty wide. Uh, somebody could actually put their RV up there for a long time. And I need to build up there temporarily some things or have or have temporary uh, tents to put up, like carports. That would help people a lot, you know. Uh, it it would, would be good to make a bon uh, composting toilet long-term plan of where to put that. And good to know just generally what's going to happen up there. Uh, my current plan is to kind of dig the top down a little bit around the oaks. Just because I like to do that. That exposes some of the cool roots and stuff. It's kind of neat. And then other places I can do other things. And then um, make flat spots. You always want to do that. So dig down a little bit. Make flat spots. Uh, this is a park area. It's not going to have much of a view. Or maybe it will. But then out from that, you have a building jutting out that has a plaza on it. And so you're standing on the building, probably with polycarbonate. No, not polycarbonate. Um, frosted glass. Uh, tempered glass. It doesn't hurt you. But basically, it's a greenhouse roof. And essentially, you can put in a greenhouse. It faces east. All of Any kind of greenhouse thing you can do up there is going to be great. Um, that can be dug into slope until you hit bedrock. So that's your cap viewpoint. And then out from that, I'm not totally sure. Um, there's a variety of options. Um, I like people to be on horizontal things. Uh, I like them to be able to walk far without walking up and down. I really like that. You can have flat streets if you design a vertical city correctly. And I say streets because I mean it's quite a, quite a bit of space. Um, and so it's not like a corridor. It, there could be corridors. I don't know. And so I need engineers to help me out on this. Like, how, And how, how many layers out do I go of building? And then where on the hill? But maximizing view is definitely one part of the idea. I have thought about, uh, well, we'd see. I don't know. I could run them down the sides. I could easily run a, a whole building down the north slope of Sanctuario towards uh, Bliss and Boog, no, uh, Cosmic and Truth, and, and then uh, so in that gully between them, we dump lots of dirt in there, and we flatten it out as a big ramp to get onto the mesa. Now that's a lot of dirt, that's a huge amount of work, but it would solve one of the transportation problems. The other solution would be to somehow buy the neighbor's property which this would be preferable, and that would hook on a road that already exists down to a different part of the Mesa. But that's all really long-term stuff. The thing is, I have to have... The, and these kind of visions are the size of, you know, the Venus Project, except that the Venus Project doesn't talk about engineering, doesn't talk about the why. They just seem to make big, pretty pictures. I never see a description of the systems of, of these buildings. They're, they're cartoon fantasy drawings. I'm sorry, they're beautiful. Make a movie about them, that's great which you should think about is the designs I'm talking about here. And that is all the water is captured. All of it. And that means you have to have enough storage for that water. And that is one of the biggest costs up front you're going to have. Although, if you plan your water right, you could build some, have it overflow into something else. You could even use hoses, maybe, to wipe down the hill and, and erode it away. Who knows? Down to bedrock. Uh, 
it's, it's a tough project. It just needs a whole cohesive design, designed like an organism. Uh, there'll be commercial spaces in it, residential spaces in it, and uh, they'll be designed for the most uh, comfortable central experience here. This would probably more likely be, I don't know, it'd be a mix of residents. I think even rental places will have residents in them. Uh, yeah. You might be wondering why I make these big, long, rambling videos. Well, I have to walk around and, you know, I don't have anybody to talk too much, so I'm talking to you. And apparently, you're still here and listening, so I'll keep going as long as people are listening and they comment. Uh, please do comment on this, and what do you think of the style of this? I mean, the angle of the camera has been weird because my, my arm's been tired. You know, I'm getting better at walking around. Um, but it's, you know, difficult. And, uh... And these, these clips are made, actually, to, to be standalone things or to slowly be collected into subject matter stuff and then put together with other clips in the same subject matter. After all those clips go together, we could re-record the whole thing in a more coherent way. But in some ways, it's kind of fun to find the scattered different thoughts and different versions of thoughts. And a little repetition can be okay, uh, especially because, you know... As you learn things and change your views or to so this day or that, you, you're mixing a, a different set of values into things. And so who you are is a little bit different and what you would create is a little different. So maybe by uh, conglomerating some of that, those clips, those, those moments of uh, viewing a particular thing, we can combine them and, and try and find the commonalities, the errors. I don't know. Um, it's a slow process. Anyway, thanks for watching all these videos. It's fun. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm open to feedback and stuff about what you enjoy or don't. Um, yeah. See ya.